Oh, sh you got a hype train already? What's up, guys? Hello? Oh, Thug Muffin, you were first. What's up, dude? How's it going, buddy? Oh, there's Teddy. I think technically you might have been actually first from a alert perspective. So I love you both. Uh, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Hello, hello. This Drunk Dane. What is up, dude? Zachary. Hello, hello. Lycan, Aramis, Bruno, Denzel. What's up, guys? Hello, hello. Munzi. Hey, how are you? Oh, I uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing that today. <laughs> we'll see. Yo, thank you for the hype train, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. What the f Dude, Teddy. Teddy, I know I haven't streamed for a couple days, but holy crap. <laughs> dude, Teddy, thank you so much for the 20 gifted subs, my dude. You just literally the train right all the way to the top. <laughs> dude, thank you so much for the, the 20, dude, 20 gifted subbies. It's been a minute since somebody's dropped, dropped a bomb like that, dude. Oh my God. Look at my, ch my chat is just like freaking out right now. Holy crap, dude, Teddy, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see you again. I hope the the project is going well. Um, dude, thank you. Seriously, thank you for the love, man. Thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let me let me catch up with everybody else who's like, Matt, dude, you guys are insane today. I just, I've, miss, I've missed you too. It's true. I've missed you too. I've missed you so much that I forgot to turn my lights on properly. Holy crap, I'm off today. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on and scene oh well somebody set them <laughs> there we go there we go now they're oh wait no now they're a follow scene there they go now they're back to normal uh thank you guys for the follows as well uh let me get everybody else here let me get everybody else here hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up uh yo atota thank you for the 41 months dude hope your day's going well uh my, today my earthworm died oh no speedy i'm so sorry I'm so sorry. Critzy, what the f Dude, I'm not even caught up yet. Dude, Critzy with the five as well. 20 five subs, dude. You guys are insane. Thank you so much. I still got to tell everybody to thank your gifter. Hold up. I'm not even there yet. <laughs> uh, and I haven't even standed yet either. Hold on. There's so many things I have to do. Um, Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I love my standing desk too. I, I really do. Actually, I should probably, I gotta, I gotta stand as well. Oh my God. You guys are killing me. Um, DS legends. Thank you for the 13 months, dude. Uh, speaker. Yeah, you are, you were on the phone or you were on the screen for a second there. Uh, rocks dude. Thank you for the 24 months, my man. I know that was like probably five minutes ago, but thank you for the 24 months, dude. Good to see you. I'll get back to you by the way, as well. I just realized what you were even talking about. Um, the way you asked me, I was like, what? <laughs> uh, but thank you for the, the 24 months, dude, the two years. I can't believe I've known your, 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 your funny <laughs> for two years. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for TwitchCon too, dude. I'm bummed that we didn't get to meet last time, but I'm excited that we, we should be able to get to meet this time. Uh, oh, Thug Muffin, thank you for the nine months, dude, as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, Teddy. You just came in here and just made all sorts of a disruption. Uh, so let me go ahead. Uh, Nickers, uh, I'm Kurt Wood, Creative Null, Begin Bot, Joey's Bites, Code Phobia, Nanor, Yoker, oh, Yoke, Yoker, Oh No, Them, Vape Juice, Jordan, True, Got Them Both. Yes. You can't escape it. I love the fact that you got True and Jordan both on a resub. They'll never escape our community. Uh, Walrus, Walrus, Nesh Codes, Free Think, Santa Os, Ooh, uh, White Wolf, uh, Elrod, uh, Edrod, uh, Kalni, Neutral Dread, and Ricky BG, Ricky BGs. Thank you. And be sure to thank Teddy as well for the gifted subbies that you just got. Thank you, Teddy, again. Thank you so much, man. That, uh, I wasn't ready for that. I'm gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to lie. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Um, inexpensive, dude. Thank you for the four months as well, man. Thank you. Thank you uh thank you so much guys for the gifted subbies and and the continued support inexpensive i hope you're doing well as well uh critzy again right after with the five get dude <laughs> i haven't even done anything yet uh critzy thank you for the five gifted as well the cypher andy tech mr demon wolf rouska and uh casey codes i i think i'm caught up 
What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up, gamers? How's it going? Ga I don't want to take that. That's Wellen's thing. I have too much respect for Wellen. But if you don't know who Wellen is, you should go follow him on Twitch because he's <laughs> awesome. Um, sup, gamers? Uh, how's everybody? How 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 are we? How how is how's the week been? Yo, glug or not? Thank you. Whoa, thank you for the prime, dude. Thank you for the Bezos bucks. That's being so sweet to me. Is it because I look nice today? Is it because I did my hair specially for you guys? Is that why? Yeah, that's what it is. It's the new, it's the new shampoo. All right. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gluggernaut, dude. Thank you so much for the two months, my man. Um, I bought a house. Oh, you bought a house. I hope that process wasn't too bad because I know buying a house can be really, really tough. Or tough but congratulations, you got a house. That's awesome, dude. Congrats. How does it feel to be a homeowner? Uh, love to see the first 10 minutes just catching up, dude. It's always, it's always like that whenever I'm gone for a bit. Thank you for the hype train, you beautiful mother. I love you so much. I just, I don't know what else to say. 31 gifted subs within 19 minutes of this stream. You guys are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the love and support, guys. Thank you. You guys are seriously the best. Um, it's too hot. Can we have uh, an ice age, please? Maybe not that cold. Maybe not to the point where I actually freeze and die. But like, you know, maybe like right before that, right? Like Arctic, right? Okay with Arctic, right? That's not as bad. Uh, I got engaged. Oh, Aramis, congratulations, dude. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. That's so exciting, my man. I, 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 hope, I hope it went well as well. <laughs> That it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, went off without a hitch. <laughs> congrats, though. Aramis, congrats. Um, all right, guys. So, uh, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been, uh, it, well, not really been a minute. I shouldn't say it's been a minute. I mean, I streamed last week. The reality of it is, is I normally stream at least, I get to see you at least every week. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, here's a, here's a catch up. Um, I, uh... There was a running job that is, wait, hold on. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. I was just uh, reading work stuff. Um, yeah, it's been eight days. It's been eight days, man. <laughs> I know the internet eight days is like nine years. Um, so here's the TLDR, you know. Um, Atoda and I, as you guys know, we started this little thing called Alta 4 LLC. Uh, it's a company we created and, uh, we, you know, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, to be honest with you. Like what sucks is like, there's so much actual cool stuff going on behind the scenes that we just can't share yet. Uh, it's still in, it's still in production. It's still in process. Um, but it's, it's been very consuming. Uh, it, we've been having a lot of meetings. Uh, we've been working on building a lot of stuff um, and planning as well, which has been really cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a bit consuming, which is why the schedule has been impacted. On top of that, um, work has been a bit more. Um, I've been awesomely uh, given more, you know, uh, I would say, you know, ownership and responsibility. And, uh, you know, it's been great. It's been awesome. Uh, but it is with, you know, more responsibility comes, you know, more time taken basically. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a little bit more demanding because of that, but, uh, don't worry. I am actually like, it's, this isn't something that I want to stay consistent. Uh, I am trying to get it all balanced out and flushed out. So I appreciate you guys. Seriously. I appreciate your patience. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. We've been getting a lot of work done and there's actually a lot of really good stuff. I'm excited to share with you guys. Um, so yeah, look forward to all that stuff. Uh, yeah, responsibilities, exactly. Today, I don't know. I, I honestly don't even know what I feel like. Oh, dude, I'm not. Um, TLDR, multiple sponsored streams coming soon. <laughs> you want spoilers? I'll give you spoilers. Multiple, multiple sponsored streams coming soon. Um, potentially, potentially some type of form of educational series. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. 
um, as well as uh, some new YouTube videos. So, no, we're not slacking. Trust me. <laughs> we got a lot going on. Uh, if you wanted spoilers, th there's some spoilers for you. Those are all, those are all things. Um, YouTube video number two. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Going to be bigger and better than the first one. You better believe it. Uh, but yeah, no, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's actually been a lot going on. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Uh, yo, what's up, Status? How's it going? I didn't forget about you. I sent some messages in the next channel. Oh, okay, cool. I will take a look at that in a second. I'm just like catching up, saying hi to everybody. Um, I'm also getting pings at work. Uh, okay, so you're trying to access a bucket from dev3 to which or uh policy cancel hold on one second guys i'm looking at something for work really quickly is the music oh no the music's going okay Propose document Dad gummit. Ugh. I'm in one of those scenarios also where like I want to ask somebody a question so they'll go look it up, but then it's also like, but if I go look it up and find it first, then I look more impressive. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go do it. Um all right, so let's see here. Let's go to develop. Sorry guys, I'm doing something for work really quickly. I had a here. Not that. Here you go, chat. There you go. Pretty, pretty <laughs> Don't hate me. Give me one second. Pretty, uh, pretty graphs. Um, where's S3, dude? Come on. There we go. All right. S3 buckets. All right. Well, it's not in dev. So that must mean it's either in documents dev or it does not exist. Um, interesting. You might need to make sure you're trying to access the right bucket there, my good friend. My good friend, um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's probably in here. New. Oh, new. That's because it's there's it because I I only see one and it's called new. Uh, I only see one bucket with that name in hippo develop documents, and it's actually called. All right. Bam! That's funny. They wanted me to find them a bucket that they didn't even give me the right name of. <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Let me just look at my desktop to make sure I'm not about to like dox myself. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I, I threw a DM on the way. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look at it in a second. Okay, so I know what I want to do, um, at least in the start here. And this is because this is something that I, I actually did run into yesterday while I was working. Um, and I didn't get an opportunity to get back to it, which is what Cran here. Uh, thank you, by the way, dude. I appreciate that uh, for getting back to me. So, okay, let's, uh, let me give you guys a scenario. And this is, so again, I told you guys that I'm working on YouTube videos. I'm not, not lying to you. I really am. Um, and one of them is a Nick's video. One of them, one of them is a Nick's video. Um, and so right now, one of the things that I'm doing is, is I'm evaluating Nick's, uh, I'm, I'm evaluating Nick's for like where I think it works really well for me, where I don't think it works well for me. Uh, and, and, and things like that, basically. Um, hold on. I think I've got an echo. All right, cool. Sorry about that. So anyways, um, I, I, I've, I've been wanting to also just try and get more comfortable with, uh, using Nix. Um, and, and, you know, just interfacing it more into my, uh, my development experience. Now, 
this will be i guess like the first start of what we'll do so if you guys are interested in nix or if you guys are you know whatever you guys have seen me mess with it more um i think what i'm about to go through uh i might even cut into a youtube video and just put it out there because i think this could be really valuable um but uh, I'm going to, or at least what I would like to do is, is I would like to uh, Nixify essentially a Python project. Um, and the whole idea behind it is, is that uh, Nix will be the builder. Uh, Nix will be, you know, uh, uh, in control of our dev environment um, and all of that, all, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the goal here. Uh, now, where this comes from is really just I had a project at work and I was going to build it in Python. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's let's build it in Python. Um, and so uh, I was gonna start using my normal like V, uh, or I'm sorry, I was gonna start using my normal, um, you know, like uh, virtual M stuff and all of that. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this is a good opportunity to try and use Nick. So what I want to do is I want to um, try creating again a very simple project. And so what we're gonna do is is we're gonna go here. And we're going to go directory and we're going to call this uh, example Python uh, example Nix Python. Sure. Um, and then in here, I need to create basically my, Pyth my Python project as well as my Nix project. Now, actually, what I'm going to do, um, and this is like a spoiler here, is, is I'm going to use something called uh, poetry. Um, if you guys don't know what poetry is, poetry, Python, um, it's just a package manager and uh, packaging system for for Python. Um, if you've ever used like, uh, you know, pip, obviously this essentially replaces it. Um, and it does a lot of really other nice things with it. It'll do things like uh, manage your packages. It'll also manage the virtual environment where those packages get installed. Um, it allows you to do things like uh, show the dependency trees um, you can also uh, use their CLI to like run commands via the shell uh, without having to necessarily exec into the whole um, virtual environment. So this is actually a pretty, I, I, I just recently stumbled into this and this was actually a pretty cool thing when I, when I found it. So if you guys haven't checked out uh, poetry, I actually, I actually recommend it. I, I don't know if I will set up projects the way I was before, but the first thing we want to do is, is we really just want to set up a Python project and we're going to use poetry to do that. Um, and so what we're going to do is, is we're going to go to basic usage and you'll see here that to basically use poetry, you install it, which I've already got it installed. Um, and then you do poetry, new poetry demo. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to say poetry new. Do I have poetry? Okay. So I don't have poetry. So let's go to my dot files and let's rebase because I need to just uh switch personal yeah i know so here's the thing i'm gonna be real with you cran i don't like that development flow i'm not a fan of it um i've tried it and it's okay but if it's something i'm gonna use more than like twice i don't know i just It requires you to run every command that way. And then at that point, I, I might as well do what I'm already kind of doing here with uh, with just, which is just turning it into a task runner. You know what I mean? Like at that point, might as well abstract the, the commands away into something. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I just don't like like and I'm going to be using, yeah, poetry for like actual development. But I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. Dude, isn't it funny that like I'm saying that now, but like what, like a month ago when we first started working with Nick's, I was like, Nick, shell all the things, bro. <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. Uh, I'll get into just in a second. Don't worry. Don't worry, nerds. All right. I got cool stuff to show you. We'll just we're going to get into things one at a time. All right. Um, so let's do this. Let's um, let's create our projects. So we're going to say poetry new and we'll call this uh example nix python cool okay so if you notice it says created package example nix python in example nix python so we now have a package in example nix python our directory uh which is really the uh the uh base of our uh poetry project i guess as you want to call it and if we go in here 
you can see like it already fills it out with a bunch of stuff my name my email uh all that we could go ahead and change this though to the company because that's what we actually create everything under uh and then we're going to say this is a uh example uh python project uh built with nix whoops okay um you should set up uh duramp later if you haven't already it will blow your mind so if you're talking about wait what is duramp is duramp for environment variables because if it is i use doppler doppler really is like the the end all be all for me when it comes to secrets i inject everything with doppler it, actually just environments in general environment variables in general it's all through it's not okay cool yeah i'll take a look at it later then yeah i was about to say if it's secrets i already solved that problem um okay so what does this mean so this means that right now i just have a python project so as a matter of fact if i wanted to if i said poetry install uh it's going to take whatever dependencies i currently have and it's going to as you'll notice create a poetry virtual env see that in my home directory so that's one of the things that's really nice about poetry if you've ever worked with python before and you're like, oh man, I got to create a virtual env and all that crap. Well, you don't have to do it with Poetry. Poetry will automatically create the virtual env, shove the packages in there for you, and uh, make your life a little bit easier. So uh, this is another reason why I like Poetry, uh, is because it really does solve like a lot of those problems pretty nicely. Um, OK, cool. So uh, we've got our packages installed. This also generates a poetry.lock. This is important for the nixing part. Now. When we talk about Nix, right, Nix is meant to be focused on reproducibility. And one of the biggest ways that it does achieve reproducibility is utilizing things like this, lock files. Can anyone in chat tell me what a lock file is? Does anyone know what a lock file is? But just, just, just basics, programming level, what is a lock file? Can anyone tell me what a lock file is? I'm going to sip on my coffee while I wait. This is going to be an interactive stream. You guys got to think about it. I'm not doing your job for you. <laughs> Engineers. Uh, remember, suggest delete lock. Yeah, exactly. Just delete lock files. It's fine. Yeah. Set your versions and locks your dependencies. Listen to dependencies. Thank you, Envaren and Aramis, the two people who actually want to contribute to the stream. Uh, yes it does it does that exactly what it does is it takes your package dependencies um and it pins them uh to the versions that you are expecting them to install now if you look you'll notice that in the package or not the package lock in the yarn she's not the yarn lock in the python lock thing here whatever it's called um you'll see that it's actually using semver uh, because it's doing different types of targeting and so that's where we're able to say like okay well we don't want a specific version of say like this or this but we're actually going to say well you know we want something that's greater than 27 not equal to 30 not equal to 310 or 31 32 or 33 um and everything else is is compatible and stuff like that so this lock gives us a lot of metadata essentially on the packages that are to be installed um are locks required no locks are not required you do not need a lock file at all however um if you have a big repository lock files can also improve your download speed time which is another reason why locks are auto generated now if you've ever created a node package like five or six years ago you might have noticed that node lock files were not being created then all of a sudden package lock files just came out of nowhere and it was crazy well what happened was you know at least in my mind um i the uh the 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 node community was starting to recognize the value of having a lock file and not just having a generated file that sat to the side. And the big reason was, was is again, that, um, you know, uh, it can do lookups way faster and immediately download those things without having to go out to the repository every time. So in the bare sense of it, even just having your packages install quicker can, uh, can be benefited, um, or can be done by just using a lock file. So yeah, lock files are very common. That's one of the things I kind of want you to think about when we talk about Nix and building things, lock files, dependency versions, things like that. Very, very important so that we make sure 
we get the same thing every time uh yo what's up bruno how's it going man i uh, was looking for a thought and i thought you were talking about uh about writing lock oh no we ain't writing lock files uh cd and directory into uh enters you to dev shell with all the dependencies oh yeah, yeah 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 i know what you're talking about okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay um scotty does know thank you for the three months man thank you thank you three months has gone by so fast dude scotty we're gonna be saying this in a year you know what and you're just gonna be hanging i don't know where i was gonna go with that but yeah it's gonna be like that basically forever <laughs> Thank you so much, Scotty, for the three months, though, man. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's there's plenty ahead, my dude. Plenty ahead. Um, it's crazy uh, because we've we've ah, dude, we've been doing this for like almost four years now. And yeah, like people come in and renew and uh, like two years. Just like, holy crap, I've never actually met you in real life, but you've been in my life for so long. Uh, isn't that common practice in dev? Even PHP. Uh, has it with composer yeah yeah that well mac that's why i'm bringing it up i'm bringing it up because it's common everywhere right um it's something that is going to be a part of a lot of development experiences uh you will have lock files and my main point of talking about that is just simply that nix is going to use them <laughs> uh nix wants your lock files chat uh it, it, it wants them uh and so I wouldn't be able to start nixifying this project really until I had a lock file, um, at least with regards to, the, to what I'm trying to do with Python. Now, before I move forward, I do want to actually set this project up so that I can kind of run something and have it work. Um, so I'm going to actually have to kind of rely on chat a little bit for some of this because I'm not the greatest with Python. I'm trying to get better at it again, or at least like the the structure of Python, like I can create a file and just like makes it up. But when they're like, can you write idiomatic Python code and that's structured properly? And I'm like, no, I can't. I have no idea. Um, so uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, now that we've got this created, here's a question. Do I just create a, like a main.py in the example Nix module? Because we have an in it. But I can never remember if I have to do an underscore underscore main dot pi here so that it knows that it's a module or is this recognized as a library right now? Because this kind of affects how we're going to run it. Put everything in one file, Edimatic Python. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, how will you make sure that uh, uh, you and I get uh, with setup.py? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can specify your direct depths to use a specific version, at least newer than that. I can't recall. Use exact version, use requires tab. Um, yo, Cowface, dude. Thank you for the five months. I'm trying, dude. I got You got to teach me some Python first because I don't fully remember this. <laughs> um, and it Py tells Python that it's a module already. Okay, cool. So it knows that it's a module, but here's the question. How do I like how do I inject my entry point code so that like do I run the init.py or no wait would I just do python run this? No. Yeah, so I feel like I need to create a file though. You you need to declare it as a script in the project that you know, Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, cool. So what we want to do is is we want to declare it as a script in the project pi.yam. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. So let's go here. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to go to Google, actually, because I have no idea how to do that. I, sh I, I spoke too soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, how to run a script using Python. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, here it is. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So what do we want? We want this tool poetry scripts. Oh, whoops. Poetry scripts. There we go. All right. And then my package. So my package in this case would be example Nix Python, right? Log revision start. Oh, right. And then the file. Okay. So in this case, maybe we just create like a, hmm. We'll call this a, uh, I don't know if I should, should I create a main here? Like, would it be against writing good Python code if I also put like, just like a main.py here? Or would it make more sense for me to be like example.py? You know what I mean? So it's like specific to what I'm doing. And then if I had something else, it'd be like berber.py. Does that make sense? 
Um, but we got to do this first before we can nix anything, chat. You don't need under uh you don't need another double under file name now, I think. Okay. It's fine there if you want. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's do a main.py then. All right. So we're going to say main.py and we're going to go to said main.py. Um actually no, we'll say main. Um now is start the function? I'm guessing start is the function, right? Start must be the the function that it's actually executing am i am i correct on that so if that is the case then i think we'd go to like uh i gotta make this a freaking what's it called uh main right and then we'd be like def start print hello chat that's how you do hello worlds on twitch by the way you do hello chat that's the only way to do them. Hello there. If somebody is doing any kind of other introduction, hello, whatever, they're wrong. It's hello chat on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> depends on the project, I guess. If you're building something with a single entry point, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, this is, a, yeah, I, that's really what I'm just trying to determine more is just like, if it's a single entry point, you just use main, right? Uh, Semver does not store enough information for it to be the case. Checksums are required. Yes, that's, yes, that's correct. Um, okay, cool. So we've got this. So now, how do I run this? command my script oh okay uh my script so let's call this um start i guess we call it start right um and then yeah how do we run then you run poetry run my script okay cool so then let's do poetry run start hey hey we did it dude i love it when python work <laughs> Dude, I'm listen. I am not the greatest with Python. I used to be really good at Python. Actually, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was working with Python for a while, um, and then I found Go, <laughs> and I just pieced out. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I, I, I just haven't, uh, I just haven't really had a lot of opportunity to work with Python lately. So I'm actually very excited that I am now. Nix it. Yes. Okay. So chat. We have accomplished the first thing we wanted to do. Here, let's let's make some let's make some notes. Hold on. All right, so let's do this. We're going to nix a Python project. Um, and then we're going to make we're going to make it uh what what should the icon be? What should the icon be? We'll make it make it the extraterrestrial alien. <laughs> Snowflake. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, Snowflake. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. Bam. I like it. That's right. I forgot the Snowflake. Yep, yep. Good call. Good call. Good call. Um, okay. So here's our problem. Here's our problem, chat. Uh, we uh, have no way to create a Python project from scratch and then um, uh, and then um, implement um, a build I uh, will say and then uh, and then use a uh, Nix flake to manage all dependencies and building uh we'll say dependencies building etc dependencies building etc so this is this is this is really like i'm trying to give you guys what we're trying to do right we're going to nix a python project right and the problem that we have is, is that we have no way to create a project from scratch and use a nix flake to manage all the dependencies with right so um bootstrap project right or we could say bootstrap python right and so what we just said was is um there are many ways to implement a python project from scratch um my preferred choice is to use 
poetry to set up the uh, initial uh, folder structure and entry points uh, or we'll say and scripts uh, for the application right so we we need to at least set up python i would say we set up we need to set up python first right and so what did we do to do that we here i and i can actually i can actually repeat it all uh so for let me grab this little bit little bits let me grab this little bit right here cat dash p nope da, 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 da. Pi project there we go and we want this little guy right here we're just gonna we're just gonna copy this for right now oh shoot boop Okay, set up project. Uh, first, we need to create our uh, Python project with poetry. I'm gonna give this to you guys, by the way. Like, you're gonna get this at the end of the stream. So don't worry, This I'm making this as an article in the wiki for you guys. Um, so the first thing we need to do is, is we create our, py our Python project with poetry. Now, if again, if I go back, oh. oops, missed that. There we go. All right, so if I go back and we'll start from scratch, the first thing we did, right? The first thing we did was poetry new example Nix Python, right? So this is the first command to getting all of this started, right? So we'll do this, boop. Um, and then we'll say, boop. And so now we go into it, right? And then we'll say, after we create our uh python our python project let's update the what is it pi project dot toml oopsies ah! god i can't type toml uh configuration file right and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go here go to our toml file and again, I want to change this so that it's our company, not me. Alt F4 LLC, right? And then we'll say example uh, project in Python using Nix, right? Uh, I mean, it's totally up to you. Yeah, it's totally up to you. New, again, new just simply makes a new folder. That's it. That's all new does. So if you want a new folder, use new if you i use new because i just you know i could just create a nix template yes i could you're not wrong and to be fair nix flex probably need to at some point yeah we are so there is already one we already have one however it needs a little love <laughs> it needs a little love uh it, it does need i've already the reason why i'm doing this manually is just because it needs love um okay so We've got our project right created after we create the project we want to do this and oh we also want to include our start script right um or or here let's do this i'll make this a, a little bit more understanding so we'll do this right boom right and we'll say uh example author just so it's like not our i guess our stuff in the in the actual docs okay and then the last thing we want to do before we do this is uh we also want to add a uh or actually here we'll do that later because we'll we'll add it after we move the or create the file um so then after we update our configuration we create a very simple um entry point file right so right now this project really can't do anything except for just exist as a module. That's really all it is. But I want to be able to run this as an actual program, right? So there's something to note about this. And I'm kind of like spoilersing you guys here and also saving you time, which is if you had started this and you didn't go in and tell poetry, hey, here's my commands or things like that, it might not know how later to use Nix to then, uh, or not not how it uses Nix, but later when we try and use Nix to package it, it might not know about those entry points and things like that because 
it, uh, Nix uses the poetry configuration uh, to generate the uh, the actual build, right? So this is where I'm kind of, uh, you know, doing a little spoilers here, where I'm also telling you guys that if you want to build an application, this is specific more for an application, something that needs an entry point and a, and a way to run something, right? Um, this is where we add this next part. So we're going to go into example Nix Python. I'm going to create a file, file called main.py, right? And this is our this is our entry point to the application. If I had just done what we just did, uh, I got to update the today, by the way. Uh, but if I had just done what I had just did without uh, creating an entry point, then uh, Nix would build this just as a module. It would not build it as an actual application, or at least that was what I experienced with it. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go main pi. We're going to say def. Um, start right we'll just create a very simple start command and that's where we'll say print uh hello uh chat right so again we are creating not only right the actual project itself right but we're also creating and making sure that we have some type of entry point into that project um and so here what we'll do is is we'll say um after uh then let's create our project entry point uh, file which uh, has one function to start the application right so then we'll uh, say uh, touch example nix python main.py and then uh, Actually, let's just do this. Ex example nix python main.py like that. And then we'll put the we'll put the content inside. Cat dash p main.py. Right. So again, super simple, just a stupid simple main.py so that uh we have an entry point of some of some sort that we can keep iterating off of. Uh and that's something else that I want to be fair about is is like I could have just kind of said, oh, well, let's just, you know, immediately start building it with Nix, but there are still parameters and problems that I'm going to need to solve, right? Like I said, this is an application. And when I didn't do that the first time, I really found myself in a scenario where I had to then start researching and figuring out, oh, well, this is actually something that has to do with like poetry and like the configuration and Nix isn't seeing that this is an application. So we need to figure out how to do that. So that's another, again, another reason why I'm kind of spoiling you guys on this to try and save you some time. Um, so after we create our, our, our project, uh, our project entry point file, um, with our very simple function in it, uh, we need to add that entry point to our configuration entry point. There we go. Um, is entry point not like a word? Oh, I guess it's two words, whatever. Um, so what we're going to do then is I'm going to cut this really quickly because I need to be able to type here. Um, finally, let's let's add our uh, our uh, function as a uh, executable script in our pi project dot toml file right and so like this and that should work toml wait what is there not bash how is there not toml do we not have toml for real Ooh, that sucks well whatever um okay cool and so we'll add this uh to it so we'll just do this Da, 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 so that we know that this is a part of it okay so at this point chat i should be able to run uh again uh poetry run uh and then start wait what oh i'm not in the right file or not in the right folder let's try that again okay poetry run start Wait, what? Oh, I didn't add it myself. <laughs> Whoops, hold on. There 
There we go. And run. Hey, there we go. Cool. Okay, so this document is caught up, at least in the sense of you will be able to be where I am right now with his setup Python. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up Nix, right? So once we have our Python project set up and uh, can uh, easily run uh, poetry run start, uh, we are ready to package our, uh, or we are ready to uh, set up our uh, flake using Nix. Okay, so here's the fun part about this. Um, I read an article on the internet uh, about Nix that I thought was a really good one. Um, I'll share it with you guys, but the TLDR in the article is that one of the reasons why Nix is not, or they believe one of the reasons why Nix is not just like as, you know, uh, adopted per se as, uh, you know, it could be is because there's not a lot of documentation and templating. Templating being the big thing. It's literally one of the reasons why I'm creating this document here is because there's not a lot of great stuff out there for like just how to jump and go with Nix. A lot of it is kind of like you create the files from scratch and do your own thing. Um, but that's hard to get started with, especially if you don't like understand the paradigms of Nix and things like that. Um, to solve this problem, uh, there have been template repositories and things like that uh, created to help. Now, I'm going to be utilizing something to, uh, I'd be down to help uh, a proper Nix template for this, by the way. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to open a PR for it, Cran. Um, so before I uh, kind of go into this, I want you guys to know that yes, there are templating options available. I will show them to you, but we're not going to use it. <laughs> and I'll show you why we're not going to use it as well. Um, there's a big word there's a big elephant in the room, though, when it comes to Nix that we have not talked about yet. And it's one that is very, 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 very important. Now, we've said the word Nix a lot, right? Nix, 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 right? However, we have not said the word flake a lot. Now, how many people in chat, if you can give me a one, please give me a one in chat if you know what a Nix flake actually is. If you don't, don't worry. I can finally explain it to you because I know what one is now because I learned about it all day yesterday. <laughs> uh, what terminal file explorer does he use? I use something called NNN. Yeah, it's called NNN. So nobody in chat knows what a Nix flake is. That's totally fine. Like that's 100% fine. I just want to see how many of us may or may not know. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to Lucid. We're gonna diagram this out, okay? I'm gonna show you guys with my beautiful charts what a flake is and how all of this relates. At least the best that I can. <laughs> no one really knows what a flake is. Oh, I'm gonna diagram the sh out of this. I'm gonna diagram this flake hard. All right. Oh, we need that. Ah, oh, dang it. I got to create a new freaking thing. All right, page. No, oh, I need that too. Oh, I need that too. Damn it. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Yeah, we can get rid of Yeah, we can get rid of this. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about a few, like, listen, when you're diagramming stuff, um, let, you need to talk about fundamentals first. You got to get all of your pieces on the board before you can really start building a good diagram that people can understand. So let, let's put some pieces on the board, all right? Let's put some pieces on the board. So the first piece we're gonna put on the board is Python, all right? Now this is just Python. This isn't like Python and blah, blah. This is, this is just Python and we'll say that this is Python 3.10, right? Something like that, right? Okay, so we have Python. Here, here's Python. The next thing we're gonna throw on the board is poetry. Right now, poetry also has something that we're going to throw on the board called a. Oh. 
What's it called? A poetry.lock file. Right, we'll get into that in a second, but just know that there is something called a poetry uh, poetry lock file, right? I don't know why this think it's, thinks this is a, a, a URL. Oh, it's legacy. Hold on, chat. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I was responding to something at work. Uh, okay, so like I said, uh, we've got Python, we've got poetry, and then we've got a poetry lock file. Now, there's another thing here that is important, and that's going to be uh, Nix, right? Now, with Nix, there is something that Nix has, and we're going to call this a flake, right? Now these are all of our pieces. Now let's let's try and figure out exactly how they all kind of play together, right? So let's get rid of the Nick stuff first and let's just talk about the Python and the poetry stuff, right? So at the very bottom level, the base, we have our we have our language, right? Python, right? And then what we do is, is after we install our language, we say that we need poetry to sit on top of Python. Now, poetry is going to go out to Python and it's going to, you know, do all the things that it needs to uh, manage packages. And we could even say things like uh, uh, package management, right? But that's really what poetry is doing poetry is doing package management with python um and it's again it's also got like uh we could say package management we could say configuration if we wanted to uh that's probably a better way of putting it it's the it's the package configuration for for python or for poetry right um now again at this point what will happen is is poetry is going to generate a lock file that it will reference to go out using Python and install those packages with, right? And so this is going to be our package references or our package, uh, what do we call this? Like package sources, we'll call them package sources. Okay, you guys follow me? So as I said, poetry sits on top of Python and is a, as uses package configuration and things like that using the package sources and the poetry.lock to give you everything you need to run your application, right? So there is one other thing that we could say here is, is that realistically what's going to happen is, is Python is then going to run our program, right? And we can call this our main.py, right? So let's put execute like this. Now, again, if I'm wrong, please feel free to let me know or let me know what I should change in this diagram, right? Uh, but the main TLDR is that in a poetry, just in just using poetry, we're not even talking about Nix yet. In just using poetry, right? We install poetry or we install Python first. And then we install poetry on top of it. Now poetry does our package configuration, right? It handles the uh, uh, it handles all of the uh, packages that are installed, uh, the entry points, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and then on top of it, poetry is also going to work directly with our poetry.lock file to then install those packages using Python, right? So again, the main point here is is that poetry 
is using a package dot or a poetry dot lock file and it's interacting directly with python right this is going out to python and then it's installing the packages that we need okay cool now poetry also uses python to execute your main.py right so you could see here as poetry kind of being this uh orchestrator or main controller of your python application however uh this is only really helpful to us in the sense of like uh uh what's it called um like our current our current environment right so uh we don't know um how we manage the packages except for with just using poetry's virtual environments right we don't really have massive reproducibility in a lot of ways we also don't have a dev environment right we have no dev shell or anything like that so if we go back to our document right we want to be able to create a Python project from scratch, right? And that's this, right? That's all this stuff. This is the Python project from scratch, right? And then we need to use a Flix or a Flix. We need to use a Nix Flake to manage all the dependencies, building, etc. right? So you might ask yourself, hey, um, isn't Poetry already doing the package management? It is. It is, but as I told you, poetry has limitations when it comes to some of the things that it can do. Um, and yeah, Cran, you're right. It, 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 poetry does have some sort of a dev env, but it's, yeah, it's just not as nice when we say like, okay, can we create a dev env that has all the binaries I need in it? Like think about what you actually need from a dev environment, right? Like you can create a virtual shell, sure, right? Uh, but that's just going to give you your Python stuff. And that's the thing that I want to note here is, is that poetry will actually have another thing where it will create a virtual env, right? And it'll go out and it will store your packages there. Uh, package storage. So I guess that's something else that we should kind of add here is, is that this is, this is for package storage essentially right so poetry goes out to virtual env to store all of your packages when you do something like a like a poetry install right so poetry install will go to the virtual env. that's that's the tldr on that um however however this is where it exists right like when you use poetry to develop your application all of your packages are going to exist right here in this virtual M. That means that now you need to figure out how you can package that or or Dockerize it and, and again do all of these other things. Now if you if you take the Docker route, you know, it would be almost like what going and creating a Docker file and then you know putting all these these files in it and then building, you know, building what we need. So what's interesting about when we start using Nix is it's kind of almost identical where Again, if you look at the mechanisms at play, we have Poetry, which is talking to Python for its package configuration, for executing scripts, right? Um, and then on top of that, uh, you, Poetry is using Virtual M to store all of the packages as well as to get the package sources from the Poetry.lock. But we need a way of like having a completely reproducible environment, a reproducible build, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to do with Nix essentially what we do with Py or I'm sorry, with Docker, which is we're going to create a file, right? That defines the inputs and outputs of our build. That's it. That's a that's probably the easiest way you can def you can declare or you can uh, you can explain a flake to somebody. Uh, a flake allows you to have inputs just kind of like a Docker file does with like uh, images, right? And things like that. And it allows you to take those inputs and build and reproduce your environment every time. So again, if we compare uh, like a Docker, com it's really more comparable to a Docker compose file than say like a Docker file itself, because Nix can also handle the creation of your virtual environments, right? Um, uh, but the, the main TLDR is, is that we're going to create a definition file using Nix that will enable us to have inputs and outputs. Now, the inputs, again, are going to be the things that build the actual application, 
right packages and things like that outputs are what the package actually ends up building so it's actually very very simple when you think about it um it's just not very easily approached sometimes so looking at this diagram and you say like okay well where does nix kind of fall into this well what's going to happen is a couple things nix actually yeah yeah so here uh, let me figure out exactly where i can put this so nix is gonna go here yeah and the reason for that is because nix right is a package manager that if given a input of packages can reproduce and build what we need now if you think about that right where do we have packages already? Where, like where, if we, if we just add Nix to this and we were to say, Hey, Nix, I have package sources for you. Where do you think, where do you think they might be able to come from? I don't know. I might be spoiling it for you too, chat. Where do you think Nix in our existing project might be able to already get all of the Python packages you need for your build? Where do you think Nix might, might be able to find that? Any, any ideas, chat, anybody? Can one set up Nix to reproduce a dev environment? Yes. And a matter of fact, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that lock file, exactly, exactly. Remember, Nix is a package manager, or that's one of the things that it does, right? So Nix has its own package manager, right? And so what Nix will do is, is Nix will go out to that package manager and it will, uh, build uh, and install dependencies, right? Again, we're not even talking about flakes yet. We're just talking about Nix. So in this diagram, right? When we say, what are the layers? You should be able to kind of see them now more, right? Think about, think about when you first started learning Python, right? In good design, normally things are just kind of like added, right? You, you, you don't want to be obtrusive to a design of something. You just want to add to it. Think about it. When you first learned Python, what was the only thing you used? I bet you it was that right there. The Python language itself, right? To execute your Python like we all did this, right? We, when, whenever we start with any programming language, nine times out of 10, you're just using the actual language binary and you're saying, hey, I want to execute my main.py or my entry point, whatever, and I want to run my code, right? Like that's just, that's super common, right? And then you say, okay, well, let's figure out a better way of managing this. And so that's when we say, all right, well, we want to add poetry to the mix, right? And now we're going to add poetry, which poetry actually interacts with Python directly to execute my main.py for me. And not only that, poetry adds a new layer of where it can manage my package sources for me and it manage my package storage for me, right? But this is all just for dev, right? This is, this is really just for like local dev. And then we say, okay, well, now I want to build it and and publish it right or 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 put it out in the world so now we add nix right and so what does nix do okay well nix interacts with poetry right which then returns our package sources which instead of using this it's going to build install the dependencies from its package manager so i want to note chat you guys saw this poetry goes out to the package sources and then puts it in the virtual M, right? But I told you that this is a virtual M that just sits on the computer somewhere, right? We wanna make it a reproducible, uh, you know, uh, application that we can put out somewhere. So we use Nix, right? To lean on poetry to get those package sources, but instead of installing them via the virtual env and its poetry route, it's going to build it and package them with the Nix package manager. Does that make sense? Is this starting to click? It should start to click. I feel like what I just went over should have been a big clicking moment for some of you. 
because this is really why we use Nix here, right? We're using Nix to lean on poetry and say, hey, we have a reproducible lock file of all of the dependencies you need. Well, now we can use the power of Nix to rebuild your application using our package manager, right? And not only that, Nix can then say, okay, cool. Well, let's also create a dev shell, right? Because we can build dev shells with Nix too. And then this is where the development process, uh, development env begins. And that's it, chat. This is this is this is essentially Nix. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned is the flake. Right? Like where does the flake have to do with all of this? Right? A Nix flake. So, ready for the next explanation? Let's go back all the way to the beginning. You start with your first Python application right here. This is your first Python application ever. You create a main.py file and you say, hey, Python, execute that file for me. Cool, right? That's your first step. Boom, done. We did that, right? Then we say, you know what? That's not good enough. I need something to manage my dependencies a little bit better on my computer. I need something to be able to lock those dependencies with that I can like reinstall them every time. So you know what? We need poetry. So what do we do? We install poetry. We set up the package configuration with Python so that it can run our main.py already, right? And then now we use Poetry to grab our package sources from our package.lock file and install them into a virtual env. However, however, we can't do much with this virtual env because it's on our computer. It's not like something that we can build from, right? Like it's not something that we can actually uh, package and reproduce, right? It's really just you know, there for our dev purposes. So now we need to solve the problem of saying, hey, I now want to package this like an actual product and make it so that it's reproducible everywhere in the world. And that means that we need things like uh, other binaries, other dependencies potentially, you know what I mean? This is where we step away from Python and say, I don't know, we might need, you know, the Postgres binary because we're using lib PostgreSQL, right? Like these are other dependencies that poetry itself and in its virtual env, it cannot do. But something like say Docker or Nix in this case can do that, right? Again, I'm using Docker as a, uh, as a comparison here because that's really the benefit of Docker is, is Docker gives you a portable environment. Nix can do the exact same thing, but make it again, more reproducible. And so what we do is, is we say, okay, cool. Now we're gonna add Nix to the, to the paradigm. And so now we've got poetry and our packages installed in virtual env. We're going to use Nix to actually lean on poetry and get those package sources that we've already defined, right? And with that, we're going to do something and we're going to do something like, uh, you know, build and install our dependencies using the Nix package manager in this case. And then we can also create development environment shells. Um, now, again, the last part of this puzzle is really kind of the 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 top. And this is the real like entry point to your whole application. And this is your Nix flake. Now, as I said, Nix itself in this diagram is more so meant to be focused on as the package manager and build processes and stuff like that. That's why we've got like build and uh, build and install dependencies. Right. And then like. Uh, uh, create uh, development environment, uh, or we'll say reproducible development in environment like that, right? Uh, so really, the argument for poetry to Nix is if you already have poetry integrated or starting fresh, yes. Yeah, in this regard, poetry is a requirement because it is something that we use to uh, track our Python dependencies with. Yeah. Um, now, okay, I've talked to you about how Nix can do build and install dependencies, reproducible dev environment, all that, but I haven't told you 
what actually configures that, right? Like you don't just get this out of the box by saying, oh, well, if I've got poetry, I could just use Nix. No, as I said, Nix uses this kind of like a Docker file or a Docker compose file. And so a Nix flake is the equivalent of what a Docker file would be to an image where a Nix flake goes out to Nix and determines what dependencies are needed, what reproducible environments we want, right? What applications we want to build, right? All that kind of stuff. Um, and so this can actually be packages. Uh, I think it's applications, dev shells, and then I think there's another one called packages. I'm not going to worry about packages right now because it's not something we're really worried about. But this is the whole ecosystem that we're trying to lean on here right and if we do if we do this we'll say uh reproducible configuration so we have a nix flake which is a reproducible configuration that is used by nix to build and in in uh, install dependencies for our applications as well as reproduce and create dev shells for our environment so that we can use shells to uh, do all of our dev work then nix also leans on poetry uh, for any of its package sources so that it can then ingest those package sources and use them to build and install applications reproduce dev in shells and all of that stuff so does this make sense chat uh uh does this make sense Again, the TLDR on this is that you really start here, right? Like you're not going to be doing Python or I'm sorry, you're not going to be doing uh, poetry run like I showed you before. What we're actually going to be doing is Nix run, right? Because now what's going to happen is, is Nix is going to be our true entry point to our application and it's going to lean on the mechanisms that it needs. And so like, for example, like, I guess to make this a little bit more direct, we could say that this is sometimes gone to, right? Because we don't always use the package storage. We only use it with poetry, right? Um, yeah, everything else is pretty much there. Um, so you can reproduce the reproducible reproduction. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, however, mock Nix is better for situations where you have large existing code bases. So, so the idea is that you can do many different approaches to Nixifying a project. I'm showing you a way that you can do it that also kind of exemplifies how everything works, right? Um, so under the hood, Nix would perform a poetry run. Um, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so. I think when it gets compiled, poetry, it just inherits poetry's configuration. Yeah. So in this case, what we really want to say to make this make a little bit more sense is we could say inherit uh, configuration. That's really all Nix is doing here is, is it's just referencing what poetry has determined as like, a, oh, OK, well, I can do that, too. Right. Inherit. Yeah. So the idea is, is that um, Nix is going to go out to poetry really more so, uh, I would say, to the poetry dot like that Tomil file. That's really what it's going to look at. That's, that's really all it's going to use. Yeah. It does inherit it. Yeah, it inherits it. Yeah. So Nix is arguably kind of redundant, even though it does it better. No, I would say poetry is redundant in this case. The reason why we use poetry chat is, is because Nix cannot generate the lock file that we need. At some point in the future, if Nix is able to go and do like this is the real way it is solved. And Cran, you can let me know if you agree with this. I think the real way this is solved is is by making that a first class citizen in Nix, where Nix could like look at your packages and then build its own lock file 
for what it needs. You know what I mean? Um, right now, it can't do that, at least with regards to other languages. It can do it for Nix, right? Like Nix can create lock files for Nix stuff, but it can't create a lock file for a Python project. It can't create a, a lock file for a Node project and things like that. Um, and so that's why we lean on poetry here. And that's why poetry is required as well is this because Nix is going to inherit Poetry's configuration and sources and then build everything the Nix route. So honestly, a better way of looking at this is, um, well, maybe not a better way, uh, is like this part here. Let's see if I can do this. It's kind of like this. I think might be a better way of kind of looking at it. Where like, it's separated into two parts. You've got the Nix part, and then you've got like what Nix references for what it needs. So kind of, it kind of is. It it kind of looks like this. And so, like this part would be all of the Nix ecosystem, and this part would be all of the Python ecosystem. Right. And so the way that we bridge the two is we use poetry and Nix to bridge the two. Exactly. Yeah. Now, again, if Nix could do that type of resolution uh, and things like that, then we would just use Nix. But because it can't, right, we lean on. We, re we lean on uh, poetry to, to do so. Um, let me know if you think I need to change any of these, uh, these like these uh, uh, naming things, because I, I am going to put this in the wiki and I want to make sure that it reads right so that it's understandable to you guys. Is everybody enjoying this, by the way? Like, I know that this is a little bit more like, honestly, this is going to be turned into a YouTube video. We're kind of filming a YouTube video right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, this is something I want to I want to get out um, and something I'm trying to learn as well. Um, but I want to make sure that, you know, I'm also I'm also explaining it to you guys. So, um, yeah. And so, like, I guess what we could also say to make this flow chart just a little bit nicer is we could say, like, this is our Nix ecosystem, right? This is really our Nix ecosystem. And then this down here is our Python ecosystem. I think that's a better way of putting it, right? It's just that <clears throat> up here, we've got our really all of our Nix components, right? And then down here is all of our Python components. And actually, I guess if we wanted to, we could say like, we could put this here. Yeah, see, now I'm just like having fun making charts. <laughs> I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing anymore. Now I'm just like, oh, this is fun to make charts. It is fun to make charts, though. So. so if poetry can give you a dev env and dependencies lock file, like, <coughs> I, excuse, excuse me, I guess I don't see the need for Nix outside of doing it better and for funsies. Well, how are you going to build it? Like, like you're just talking about solving the local development problem. Nix is actually going to be the thing that will make it so that you can package it and put it in other places, right? Yeah, literally what Scotty is saying. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like right now, Glam, this is all we have, right? Like this is all we've got. So if I was like, all right, I want to take this to prod. I'd have to go install poetry on the computer. You know what I mean? And then go through all these steps. So um yeah nix kind of honestly replaces everything it went listen i'm not shilling whatever the word is I, i'm not right now what i'm actually saying is is that it really does replace everything it can, can cre it can create your application for you and build it and let and, and enable you to run it it can create your reproducible environments so that you can run those uh it could do uh a lot uh, I'm not chilling, Nick, but it does solve all your problems. Yeah. Shut up, Marvin. 
Listen, if you guys don't know Marvin, he's been in our community ever since we played like Warframe back in the old days, and he's been consistent at breaking my balls. <laughs> So I appreciate I appreciate the consistency. Um, but yeah. Did you? I oh you may maybe it was when we were playing Overwatch. Maybe that's what it was. Uh so Nick's really whips so yeah, it basically it whips the llamas the llama. Um it also creates a myriad of new problems. Nothing is perfect. You're not wrong. Yeah, you're absolutely not wrong. You're not wrong. And this is why I've had a lot of people ask me, like, should I move to Nick's? Like um uh yeah i agree there's no yeah solutions only trade-offs i i 100 agree yeah um what was i gonna say though i forgot uh you you you, you broke my, my dang concentration um dang it i forgot what i was gonna say anyways um yeah so i hope this makes sense again i will make sure that this is uh, a part of our little wiki article that we post for you guys but again this should this should help with the understand. By the way, thank you, Steffi, for letting me sit. Um, this should help with the understanding of how Nix works with Python, how these two play together to achieve what we're trying to achieve, which is using Nix to build our application and then Python ecosystem to, you know, actually, uh, you know, manage the logic part of it, right? So this is really all logic, right? and this is all so like i guess another way of kind of looking at this and and cran like you might even agree with this and other people as well this is devops and this is engineering hello there yeah i i think this is a great way of looking at it honestly right in in a in a in a world where this is being ran at a company devops manages all of this right we manage all of this right you guys or not you guys but developers manage all of this i guess i should call this developers make sense so this is another reason why nix is really nice you asked uh uh glam right glam let's let's go back to your question for a second you you said what's the point basically right totally fair but if you look at this in the previous example where we just had poetry DevOps would have to work directly with poetry and like they would all like basically we both exist here, right? DevOps both exists here, right? But using Nix, DevOps can exist here with everything that's here, right? This can be poetry, this can be Node, this can be Go, this can be uh, whatever, right? But the idea is, is that these tools up here at the top are always going to be the same, right? These tools are always going to be the same, right? These will be different, but we don't really care about these. The developers care about these, but we don't really care about these as much, right? But from a DevOps perspective, this is what we really focus on and care about, right? And so this is what makes tool and Nix very powerful when we go back to like the tool behind it, right? And what, what it can do. Um, yeah this is uh this is where it helps a lot it separates the concerns where devops can be concerned about the reproducibility configuration the build and install dependencies the reproducible dev environments right and the developers can be focused on their packages and their their lock file and their virtual ems and all this stuff like it's it's a complete separation between the two yo what up pick pick dude where you been man i've been on dude i'm in i'm you i'm you pick i'm offended i'm offended doug what is it called neo fetch uh nix shell dash p neo fetch is it neo fetch is that what it's called i can't remember it neo fetch hold on hold on i have to do it the true nix way bam You were saying pick, huh? You were saying, what was you saying, dog? <laughs> Yo, what up, free think? How's it going? We need a Nix, by the way, channel for Twitch. Uh, get all the neck beards. We got a Nix channel in our Discord, man. All, listen, everybody who likes Nix, 
you are welcome in our home. Please join our growing Knicks community. It is something I'm really trying to get behind. I really like Knicks a lot. I really, really do. Um, we created a channel in our Discord dedicated to it. Um, Kran's been super awesome. Mad Max is, or Max Headroom's been super awesome. Um, yeah, join. Like, dude, be a part of the conversation. Like, uh, I'm making some content here soon around Knicks. It's gonna be good stuff, man. Uh, shout out to the Unix porn literal art. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, you have even a newer version than mine. I'm still on 2205. Yeah, dog. Unstable. Pick, do you expect anything less of me? I mean, seriously, you we've we've known each other for a while now. I think Hello you know that. that when I go, I go hard. <laughs> uh yeah, everybody knows BG's unstable. Duh. Have it, yeah, duh. Uh Nick's does seem interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh nightly unstable. Exactly. Yeah, I'm nightly. I'm unstable nightly. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> like my 20s. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, cool. So this really should help. Now, again, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say Nix. Uh, I, I think I'm going to do this as well. So like Nix DevOps and then like Python developers. I really like, I think honestly, even for me, it kind of helped a lot being able to be like, oh, okay, this is basically where everything that DevOps does. Like I can, it's pretty dope that you can visually see you know what i mean the separation here i really i dude i love charts i love charts so much i know i made this one so i'm not trying to like <laughs> but charts are so cool especially when you can look at them and they like make sense um okay all right cool so let's go ahead and let's do this right we've already done this right we've already done this but we need to do this now which is we need to get nick's set up now we said that the main entry point here is our nix flake okay with everything i just said to you i precursored this whole like small bit that we're talking about now by saying that this part this nix flake part is templatable it is remember we said that this is a configuration just like poetry uses a configuration for packages right so this is uh we could say that this is more like uh build uh configuration and then this is package configuration right which it really is for for python this is just managing python based packages whereas nix is managing all of the packages it's managing uh the things needed to build and install the dependencies as well as the python packages down here so i think it is important to note that the nix flake is going to be the build configuration uh, whereas poetry is going to be managing the package configuration really is all it is. Um, and that's another thing to notice is they are separate. They're two separate things going back to is one versus the other. You're using both here. You need both here, right? Um, okay. So, uh, the Nix flake will have our build configuration, which will then utilize Nix to build and install dependencies to create our applications. And then, uh, uh, repro uh, uh, actually we should say, uh, build and set up, uh, dependencies. Oh my gosh. D E P E N D E N C I S dependencies, uh, for our dev shells. Hang on one second. Um, is this an entirely brand new bucket? Um, would this be something we would want the uh, S3 vertical for to see? It. Um, I'm not entirely sure what our current best practice is for creating buckets. Okay, I'm, I had to reach out to somebody at work about something because I am slightly confused. Um, okay, cool. So again, Nix Flake build configuration, good. All right, so like I said, uh, templates are available, uh, but they're not... Nix is completely open source, right? It's all powered by developers and developers, developers, developers. Developers, developers, developers. It's all developers. It, it is. It's, it's powered by 
a fantastic community of passion, passionate people, um, passionate people who, you know, uh, are just trying to build out and, and, you know, have something that they want. So when we talk about like anything that's available in the Knicks world, you really have to have that mentality, right? This isn't a company building an operating system with backing and things like this. This is, this is really mostly just people building this because they want it. Um, and so there is a Nix flake template repository that you can use. Uh, it's called Nix OS templates, right? Um, and you, you can look at this, you, you're welcome to take a look at this. Uh, and I'll even mention this in the doc, which is, um, uh, flake, uh, we'll say, uh, create flake. Um, so there are two main ways to starting using Nix flakes, uh, the first is by scratch and the second is using uh, community made templates. Um, you, you can rely on templates. However, uh, they may be out. Oh shit. Hold on, I need to check on something really quickly. Uh, service directory. Hang on. I'm not aware of the history. Basically, I know the bucket. I, I knew it. One second, chat. Got something for work coming up. Just give me one second, one second, one second, one second. All right, here we go. Got it. Okay, sorry about the ping at Pankaj. I was not aware we have now. Um, so we will want to create a new bucket for this service in in that file. Uh. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, not my realm. Are flakes essentially Nix packs without the Docker component? Okay, really quickly, super, super fast about the whole Nix packs thing. Dude, I'm sorry, but like, ugh, I don't know. Um, Nix packs seems very interesting. However, I'm not a massive fan of it just because it's a lot of like, It's a lot of abstraction that doesn't really tell you what it does. So if you guys have heard of Nix packs, it's essentially um, something that allows you to define a kind of what we're doing already. Um, and then underneath the hood, it kind of builds everything with Nix. It's not the same in the sense that there's a lot. Oh my God. What the fuck, dude? I'm sorry. I'm just get like I'm getting barraged right now with messages at work. Sorry, guys.
Hello there. Okay, sorry. Yeah, work fires. Yeah, I've got somebody at work right now who's like, I need a bucket. And I just like, I hate, I hate that. I'm just like. <sighs> That's not what I do here. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, okay, what's the bucket for? Why do we need it? Is this the only service that interacts with this bucket? Like, I, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I can't just give somebody a bucket. I have to be like, okay, does it interact with any other services? Why? Like, what? Like, what? You know what I mean? Um, so, to really quickly, to go on to Nick's packs. Um, Nick's packs is really uh, a abstraction on top of Nick's itself. Um, from what I've been able to tell, it's. It, it uses Nix under the hood, but it really uses Docker as well. So to go back to the question of like, like what is the, what, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. I got to think about this for a second and how to respond to him. Um, anyways, uh, sorry, I know I keep getting distracted. Um, the TLDR is, is that this is going to take what you need, turn it into um, a build, and then shove that into a Docker container. Uh, Nix can do this already by default, right? Like what we're, what I'm showing you right now in this diagram is really what this is doing except for it's not utilizing from what i know all the same mechanisms like i don't know if it's actually building a flake i don't know if it's doing other things or if it's really just trying to set up a very simple node environment and then kind of like freeze frame that in, in time in nix I, I i i to be honest with you i don't fully know here all right let's look at this um analyze the source app directory and generate a reproducible build plan this can be saved in json or reused later Create a plan, da, 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 build the step, takes a build plan, because OCI can play an image with Docker that can be told by it anywhere. Create a build plan. Use the Nix packages to build a plan environment. Dot Nix. Okay, yeah. So yeah. So what's happening underneath the hood is not what we're doing. What we are doing is is we are creating a Nix flake that can be reused anywhere, that can be rebuilt anywhere. Um and and is 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 highly highly configurable and reproducible um nix packs is generating something called an environment not nix now if you know what an environment dot nix is in the actual uh nix ecosystem you know that an environment dot nix is actually made for um uh operating systems nix os nix os uses environment dot nix um, mostly at least to create like the whole environment. Um, this isn't the same approach we're taking, right? Um, the, the, this isn't the same approach we're taking. Uh, this is really, uh, sorry, configuration.nix. Yeah. Thank you. Configuration.nix. Um, they just used environment.nix here, I guess, instead. But my assumption is, and again, this is just my assumption is they just generate a massive environment.nix file and then build against it. Whereas we are creating a very configurable based Nix flake that allows us to set the packages we want, pin those packages, like a lot more than just getting a node image in a Docker file. And as Cran says, the, yeah, he's not wrong. The Nix community is not really big on Docker, mostly because it's not really needed. Um, so it's it's more of like why use it at all like honestly using nix packages with or using nix with docker is a bit of an anti-pattern because they both do the same thing um now you can build nix os containers right and that's probably what they're doing there but i don't know there's a lot of different ways of deploying nix i'm still learning a lot of it myself to be fair uh yeah my flake works for nix os ubuntu and max os yeah exactly yeah exactly exactly home manager is really nice when you can't run nix os or want to abstract your config across multiple os's exactly all right so i have sat here and i've explained to you a bit more of nix 
um what we're going to do now is, is we're actually going to create the flake file so like i told you there is a repository of flake templates essentially nix templates um you can check it out if you want you're more than welcome to um you can just uh yeah go there um and again you'll see that there's some already in there bash c uh there's a full example go here is the downside to this repository. If you look at the commit histories, you're going to see six months, six months, four months, 12 months, four months, four months, so seven, six, 12, four, five, blah, 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 right? They are incredibly outdated from each other. Uh, there are some that are using older, uh, older approaches. There are some that are using newer approaches. Um, and so it's a little difficult to know if you're new, which one you like and which one you might not like. Um, I went to kind of like which one was updated the most recent. <laughs> so I went to like the full one and languages I know, Python, Go, stuff like that. Cran, relax. This is all going into a video. I have to I have to say the video. This is for a video. Um, but yeah, no, all of this is, you know, uh, these are good starting points. I would definitely say if you're if you're interested in starting, uh, all you want, all you have to do is do Nix Flake in it template and then the template uh, target of your choice. Um, and it'll, it'll create a new, uh, it'll create a whole new, um, set of files for you. Uh, and here, I'll just show it to you really quickly as well. So here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. We'll do new and we'll go here and we'll paste this in. And so if I say my new, uh, Nix project, boom. And so now if I go here, we'll see that I have a flake dot lock and a flake dot Nix. And if I open this up, Look at this. This is this is my flake file. Now this is uh, this is a that. much different template. This is like the full template, which is why you're seeing a bunch of stuff pre-configured. Um, however, if I just do this and then I say uh, instead of full, say let's use Go, right? Uh, or no, let's use Rust. We'll use Rust. Rust, right? And then we go back to here. Then you'll see that you actually get a, a bunch of other stuff, right? Uh, you get a workflow, you get a default, a flake here. And look, this flake is much smaller. So as I told you guys, flakes don't have to be massive. They can be very simple or more. It's just a configuration that you're making yourself. So let's go ahead and make our configuration for our project now. Yeah, the rest, honestly, they all kind of suck <laughs> to be fair. Uh, all right. Again, I showed you how to do it with a template. Now I'm going to show you how to do it manually. Um, so let's do this. Uh, we're going to use the... Uh, the code that Cran was nice enough to write up for us. Now, this is uh, really going to enable us to create a very, very, very simple reproducible package of our Python package that we've made, right? Um, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this over here so that I can type it out kind of as I, uh, as I go through it. So let's do this. So, all right. So I'm going to say touch flake.nix cool there's my flake and we're going to go ahead and open it up so what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to go ahead and create the main uh like return value essentially if you don't know much about the nix language uh the tldr and I'll, I'll read the explanation in a second um the tldr is is that every file returns a variable right it returns data of some sort right so when you're using or when you're first starting to create a nix file this like this here is actually a Nix file. It technically is. And if I did something like foo equals bar, right? This is a, yeah, this is, I'm sorry. This is a function. Yeah, this is a returned function uh, that I can now use and import anywhere in Nix. So if I was just to be like, I want a very simple bam, then uh, this, this is all I need. Um, they should not. Hello there.
Oh God, I almost choked on my coffee. Oh God, I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. Whew, sorry about that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, I've, I like drank my coffee wrong and I almost choked. Okay, so let's create our 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 return our, our our file here. So, like I told you, a flake is consisted of essentially uh, inputs, right, and outputs, right. Like this here. Actually, if I just did foo bar, right. If I just did this and then I did nix eval foo. Oh, wait, what am I missing? Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, I am missing. What am I missing? I'm missing. Oh, shoot, which eval am I missing? I know it. I know I'm missing a pair of brackets. I can just never remember exactly where they go. Outputs. Okay, it's this. My bad. So it's this. It's outputs equals boom, boom. There we go. Self. Because self is always there by default. Right. Bar. There you go. So you see that chat? This already is a very, very, very simple Nix Flake. Right? So when I tell you that flakes can be very, very simple, they definitely can be. Um, yo, what up? What up, uh, Rox? How's it going, buddy? Hold on one second, chat. I am getting messages. Uh, so the render service itself has permissions. It's just pod that doesn't... But it looks like, yeah, pod legacy. Da, da, da. I don't know the proper place. But da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, guys. I was looking at something for work. What is up, everybody? Rockstar, how's it going, dude? Thank you for the raid. You sweet, sweet, wonderful soul. How was your stream? How's everything going on? Welcome everybody, defy us all. Hello, hello, Johnny Clues. What's up, my guy? Hello, hello, soul, 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 Um. Hello, how was your stream, my dude? Um, welcome everybody, sorry. I am a little distracted right now because I'm also Hello. a DevOps engineer and I am doing stuff for work as well. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome. Uh, I am BG, I am one of the co-hosts of the Alta 4 stream. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to the channel, be sure to check out that little blurb right here. Basically, we are a variety stream hosted by myself, BG, as well as my good friend Atota, as I just said. Uh, I program and Atoda is actually going to be programming chat spoilers. I got more spoilers for you guys. And actually, this is probably one of the biggest ones yet. Um, we have been actively working on getting Atoda ready to start streaming coding. He is amped for it. He is excited for it. Uh, and so Atoda will actually be joining the coding ranks here on Twitch, uh, soon as well. So be sure to stick around, or, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. But yeah, I am. A, I, I specialize in DevOps. Uh, I've I've spent a lot of my time working in a lot of different career paths in the engineering world. Uh, fell in love with DevOps, and um, yeah, it's a big thing of what I do today. Um, if you are just tuning in, I am working with something called Nix and Python. You probably know the latter, Python, uh, just a programming language, right? Um, Nix, however, you might have not heard of, or you might have heard of with regards to you know being a uh, you know ultra neckbeard and things like that. Uh, yeah, that's very fair, uh, but it is also a very, very cool piece of technology uh, that allows you to reproduce and rebuild um, applications. Um, so when we say Nix as in Nix Packs, uh, Nix Packs uses Nix under the hood. Yes. So uh, it's not the same in the sense that what we're doing, what we're doing is, is we're creating, we're really doing what Nix Packs does, but better and from scratch and the real way that it's supposed to be done, which is using Nix. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I'm a big, listen, I'm a massive Docker fan. I use Docker every single day of my life and I love containerization. Um, however, uh, Nix solves it in a much different way. Um, and it, uh, it doesn't really need containerization to do it. And so I'm showing you guys today how you can, uh, wrap your own application, um, in Nix, uh, and, and have like reproducible dev environments. Um, the TLDR is, is it's this big thing right here. 
Um, and I'll go through it really, really fast. I know, Cran, you've been waiting. Don't worry, dude. Well, I'll, I'll run through this really fast, Cran, okay? Um, the TLDR is... I'm going to delete a whole bunch of stuff, and we're going to kind of get started from what we're all used to, which is this right here, right? When you first create a Python application, you've got a Python version, right, uh, that executes a Python application, right? This is your main.py. And this is something we're all used to, we're very common with. And, you know, if you've ever worked with a Python or any really programming language, you're used to this, right? Node, execute, go, execute, right? So forth and so on. This is the basic foundation of a lot of, you know, applications out there. Okay, and then we say, all right, well, we need packages, right? We want other people's code so that we can very easily import that code and use it and build our own software with it. Now, with Python, there's tons of ways of doing that. You can use setup.py, you can use pip, you can use virtual environments, you can use all these other things. Uh, we're utilizing something called Poetry. Poetry is a really nice Python packaging and dependency management system. Uh, and so we're going to add that to our diagram. So we say, okay, well, now that we've got Python, let's add poetry to it, right? And so poetry is actually going to take care of uh, the package configuration, right? Which it's going to then go out to Python. Um, it's going to generate a poetry.lock file, right? So that we know where all of our sources are coming from. And it's going to store those packages locally for development, right? in our virtual env that poetry creates. And so from a developer perspective, right? Uh, this is really what we're all kind of used to, right? Um, and so uh, like this is enough from a developer standpoint, but when we start talking about rebuilding it in other places, reproducibility, packaging, things like that, this this setup really falls short, really. This is, this is solving the developer's problem, right? not solving the production i want to get it to the cloud or all that kind of stuff problem so then what we do is, is we say okay well we need to somehow inherit the configuration from poetry so that we can rebuild this in other places now if you've ever heard of docker right docker uh this is something that's very very common with docker you create a docker file and then it inherits the configuration so that you can build your your application and then you add other things to your docker file like files and and uh you know dependencies and things like that well nix really does the same thing and except for better in a lot of ways uh and so what we're going to do is is we're going to say all right well now we're going to add a whole other layer right and as a matter of fact these tools are what devops are going to use now python is going to or uh, python developers are going to use the python tooling right um, and they'll use like very simple entry points that we create, but we're going to be the ones in charge of the Nix side of things. We're going to be in charge of inheriting that configuration from poetry or from wherever, uh, and then building and installing our applications, right? This is the, the actual process of creating the, uh, creating the, the actual build, right? And not only that, Nix can create our dev shell. So, you know, you say, okay, well, I use Docker for my dev environments. Well, Nix can create those for you as well. And so... This configuration not only is going to be for our application and our build, but it's also going to be for our environments and our dependencies and, you know, all the CLI tools and everything else that we need. So when we say what Nix does versus what Python does, or I'm sorry, what uh, poetry does in this regard for Python, right? Py uh, poetry is really just managing all of the dependencies for the Python application and the source code. It decouples the packages that exist in the repository for the code from the dependencies that might need to be done in the build artifact, right? These dependencies are inherited from here, and then we have our own that we tack on top of it. And that's why we've got this kind of like, you know, uh, layered uh, diagram. And so what happens is once we inherit those, right, we're then able to build what we need. So we're gonna do that. We're going to create our Nix flake. Now, as I said before, I am going to be creating a wiki article in our wiki. If you don't know, we have a wiki. Uh, and I'm going to be adding this wiki article on how you can nix a Python project, essentially. Um, and so you guys will be able to... Uh, uh, you, you guys will be able to, to do this yourselves. Now, uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to say, first, let's create a very uh, simple... Uh, flake.nix file with uh, only 
out uh output with only outputs right now the reason why i'm doing this and the reason why i'm showing you this before i jump into what cran made us for our template is that this is a language nix is a language chat okay it is not just a package manager it is also a language and so if i wanted to right if i go in here and i create my nix file here we'll do it again i'll say uh new file flake.nix right and then we're going to create our our, our returned function right and in here we're going to say outputs right Hello we said that. we were going to do outputs right and then in outputs we're going to declare a value and then we're going to say our value is foo bar and actually here we'll say this we'll say uh hello chat right hello chat right now one parameter that's always given to our function is uh the self right because we want to be able to reference our self this is kind of similar to like how python works so this is an actual function this outputs is an actual function and if we look at it self is a parameter right um and we've got hello chat so if i just do this right and then i do nix flake dot pound hello or wait no i'm sorry not sorry nix eval wait no wait what is it eval nix yeah, it's eval and then dot pound hello oh whoops i always forget because i write so much javascript I always forget I need semicolons everywhere. Uh, oh, but this one doesn't need one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I don't want you to archive it. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, I'm able to evaluate it successfully and return my value back that says chat. Now, what's interesting is look at the command I'm running. I'm using Nix eval dot and then a uh, uh hash i guess uh with hello right so if we look at this command a little bit closer right you'll see that i'm running the nix cli i'm telling it to eval you'll notice i'm not giving it any type of file which means that it must be inheriting the default flake that we created which it does and then we tell it hey dot hello meaning that this output is what we want to reference right the output in the current path hello and the pound is really what uh tells us hey this is the output we want to reference now i can do something else as well which i can just do nix flake show and look at this if we look nix flake show is going to show me that hey you have one output named hello now we don't know what it does we don't know what type it is or anything like that but we do know that you have some type of output that says hello as i told you before flakes are just a configuration file for managing inputs and outputs of a of a config or of a build right or of an environment whatever this is the bare minimum you need to be able to achieve that now there's so much more on top of it that we're going to get into but as I said, if you just wanted to be like a, what is the equivalent of like a hello world with a flake? This is it. This, this would be the closest thing you can get to a, a flake hello world. So first let's create a very simple with outputs uh, and then let's uh, verify it's properly, or it's properly parsing with Nix uh, flake or Nix eval hello right uh which should return right and we said that it should return chat like this perfect okay uh as long as it's not trailing comma i'm all right with it um it's a weird dsl yeah yo p copley thank you for the nine months by the way thank you thank you so much for the nine months appreciate you um okay cool uh i'm still kind of confused by all of this uh do all the devops in your company use nix no i'm the only one who uses nix yeah this is something i'm evaluating 
It's gonna make more sense in a second, I promise. Yo, Rooster Box, thank you for the six months, my dude. Sorry for like being really inappropriate and then just blowing smoke. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you so much, dude, for the six months, though. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have been massively supportive today. Listen, we're gonna get through this Nick stuff together. I <clears throat> would not, I promise you, chat, I would not share something with you if I did not believe it was worth your while or worth your time. I think that's something you all know about me very well by now. And I promise you that after, 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 it's, this, listen. <clears throat> the easiest way I can explain it to you is this is a it click scenario. I'm serious. You got to hear me out on this one. One of the reasons why Nyx is having a, it, it, a disconnect is because you haven't had that oh moment yet a lot of the times those moments don't happen until you start messing with them and to be fair i didn't even have that moment like i didn't even i wasn't even able to do this like be like oh how could i create a very simple flake like i wasn't even able to do this until like yesterday when i actually realized like oh this is the this is the dsl it's very simple um well not simple but it's 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 a yeah long story short just it's easier to understand than i thought um so trust me we're gonna get there it's a little bit of a challenge, but don't worry about it. Um, I really don't get why they just didn't use something like YAML or something for this instead of making their own thing. So we have to get another configuration. YAML cannot do things like functions. YAML's not an actual turn. Is Turing com YAML's not Turing complete. YAML's not an actual language. Like YAML's not a language. It's it's really just like a. Uh, that's why it doesn't have a language server, right? Like, you can't really compare YAML. Well, it, so okay, so it's a markup language, but still, it's 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 a generic markup language. It's not something that is. Again, at least I don't think I don't think it's Turing complete. Flake is Turing complete, basically. Uh, yeah, there's no logic. Exactly, there's no way that you can yeah no exactly chad you're exactly right there's no way that you can create functional programming methods and handle those methods and things like that so if you could do that with yaml then maybe there's more of a validity of using it but in this case there there really isn't much um because of that um could they have used lua i actually thought when i first started messing with this it felt a lot like lua it really, in my opinion, does. No, no, no stupid questions. In my, in my opinion, it really does feel like Lua. Um, uh, and as you start, like, as we start going into it more, you'll you'll see, like, which which we should do, honestly. We should do. Let's keep moving on. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, uh, what does Turing complete mean? It means that you can pass a Turing test, essentially. You can write logic that can trick. Well, not trick, but uh, you can write logic that um, would be able to uh, be in a Turing test. Like, like, that's what it means to be Turing complete is, is that the language can be expressive enough to where it can, uh, be in a Turing challenge. Yeah. <clears throat> you can do with enough effort, do, uh, you can with enough effort, do all the, yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's not the definition of Turing completeness. No, no, you, yes, you're right. That I am. Yes. Marvin is correct. I am not defining Turing completeness. I am just defining how a lang like what a language is in relation to like they seem to be green. Yeah. Okay, hold on, chat. I'm getting another message. Somewhere. <coughs> Hmm. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Let me catch up with chat. Um, 
Turing complete very basically phrase just means you can program uh, basically anything in it and it is a very low bar uh, to clear. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Excel and PowerPoint are Turing complete. HTML and CSS is Turing complete. Uh, for dummies, Turing complete means that you can compute everything you can think of as long as you have the needed amount of memory. Um, is it that? I guess that. Yeah, I guess that. Is that that? I don't. To be fair, I haven't even Google. I haven't even looked at what Turing complete means in a while. Let me look it up. Uh, which your program? Uh, so okay, so Turing complete means a system in which a program can be written that will find an answer, uh, although with no guarantees regarding runtime or memory. Okay, so actually, it has nothing to do with memory, from what it looks like, from what I'm reading. It looks like uh, it's all about being able to find an answer, essentially. If it's a program that can find an answer, or if it's a language that can find an answer, right? Um, then, yeah, this job was not claimed in over 10 minutes. Interesting. Okay, hold on. If it's blocked... I would cancel and rerun from last step. I'll need to look into this. All right, I'm going to have to look into a problem at work later. All right. All right, sorry about that, guys. Okay, cool. So let's hop back into the code. All right, so like I said, we started with a very simple flake file right it's using the nix programming language and if i do uh if i do nix eval dot pound hello we can get our value back which is chat right and if i do nix flake show we can see that we have one output right now named hello and it's unknown of what it, it actually is so let's let's go into the flake more so that you understand this now again we're going to go back to this diagram super super fast just because i want to make sure this is all making sense with regards to what we're doing, <clears throat> right? So again, I have a super simple flake file here, but we said that in our diagram, the Nix configuration needs to inherit poetry, right? Right now, we have no way of doing that, right? It's just, it, there's really nothing here. So we're going to make it, excuse me, so we can do that. Now, again, the reference that you see here, right? is what Cran was nice enough to make for us. Again, thank you. And I will go through the explanation that he gave too, as well. Um, but let's go ahead and get it written first. So I'm gonna go and I'm actually delete the outputs here for a second and I'm just going to make it so we just have our, our basic function to return. And what we're gonna do is, is we're going to say uh, inputs. Remember, we talked about inputs. Uh, now I'm gonna separate the code a little bit differently than how Cran has it just because I want it to look more like it makes sense into how I'm explaining it. Um, but you can do things like chaining and, and make it so you don't really have to. And that's what Cran's doing here. He's just chaining uh, and making it so that he's just defining the Nix packages URL. Um, I'm doing essentially the same thing. I'm just doing it in a little bit more verbose context. So Nix packages dot URL equals, right? And then we're going to say GitHub. Now, one thing to note about this URL, you're going to notice that there is a semicolon here. This is specific to Nix. Nix knows about uh, different types of sources. It can be files, it can be website or HTTP, it can be GitHub, things like that. So uh, this GitHub is simply just telling Nix, hey, we want you to get the packages from GitHub. What does that mean, chat? That means that all of Nix packages are hosted on GitHub. Yes, that is true. When you talk about where are you downloading the definitions for your Nix packages, you're downloading them from a Git repository. Uh, okay, so GitHub, Nix OS, Nix packages, uh, Nix packages slash unstable. Now we're using unstable. Nix has a bunch of different, uh, a, a bunch of different uh, uh, what we'll call uh, you know release uh, cycles. Right, they've got their unstable, which I think is updated like every 24 to 48 hours. They have master, no, unstable. Yeah, unstable is updated every 24 to 48 hours. Master is updated every night, from what I know, um, and then so forth and so on. So we're 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 using we're using like the the absolute latest we really could within means. Also, don't really be worried about unstable. I run unstable on my system. Uh, I don't know if it says it here. No, it doesn't because it says 2211. 
Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's fine. Unstable is actually the more common way of doing things. Um, so now that we have our inputs, let's define our outputs. Now remember, I told you that these are functions, right? That are essential, or these are valuables that are or valuables. These are variables that are Love returning that. functions and things like that. So what we're going to do is we have a uh, we have our main uh, return here that returns our inputs, right? With our value of Nick's packages URL. Now we're going to return our output. So what we're going to do is we're going to say self and then Nick's packages. The reason why we have Nick's packages here, chat, can anyone tell me why we have Nick's packages here before I say it? Can anyone super quickly tell me why we have Nick's, like why is Nick's packages here and here? Can anyone guess maybe why Nick's packages might be here? <clears throat> output to another thing kind of so this is actually the input that you define here so if i was to go fooflam dot url right then that means that i now have this available to me here and you have to declare it that's something else that needs to be noted is, is like, if you declare an input, you have to make sure that you declare it as a parameter to the output, because that's what's happening. The inputs are being injected, yes, through dependency injection, essentially, to the output function. Uh, and so what we're saying, chat, what we're saying is, hey, I have an inputs of, think about this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you like the Matrix chat. All right, guys, we're in the Matrix right now. We're sitting on the Nebuchadnezzar, hanging out. I'm looking at the thing going, all I see is... You know what I mean? So what I see when I look at this, but reading this code chat, all right? I see that we have a file that takes an input of Nick's packages, and that is a URL to a repository of every package in Nix. That means that this input is literally the packages that every package we could possibly download. Now, does it mean it's going to download all of those packages? No. What it means is, is that this is the atomically saved packages that it will reference that we can download from. So that's the first thing to note is it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's atomic in the sense that once we generate our lock file, this isn't going to change. Right now, a con uh, 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 to to like counter that, right? Think about DPKG, think about yarn, or think about uh, uh, apt and all of those other things, right? You have repositories with uh, apt and yum that are constantly updating in the background, right? They're new, up uh, adding new packages, updating new packages, right? And every time you go to install, if a new package is there, you have the option of installing it or not installing it, right? What Nix does is Nix says, no, 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 no. I'm going to download the whole state of all of our repositories and SHA lock it. And we'll only download those until you update the SHA, meaning that this, these packages could be updated by Nix packages in the repository, sure. But until we tell our flake, hey, you need to get all of the new packages it's not going to actually install any of those and that's what we mean when we say completely reproducible right even the packages are locked where if you need a new package it's going to download it from that shod version of the packages that you in or you referenced in your input not just whatever is recently available. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Again, ask questions if you don't understand. It's okay. But again, this one line here essentially makes it so that we don't have what is called drift, where we don't have versions drifting from under us. This is locked and it will not change. Okay, like I said, so we've now got our Nix packages as our input. So let's continue writing the rest of our uh, the rest of our um, flake. All right, so what we're gonna do now, based off of what Cran wrote, is we're going to uh, after right after the outputs, we're going to declare a new value uh, or basically like a new uh, a new thing to return. 
um and this is really going to be like the the function parameters so uh these i'm sorry not the function so these are the function parameters this is like the actual logic so this is like if blah 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 right like this is where your logic goes so what i'm saying here is, is i'm not returning a value here per se but i'm firing a function that inside of this function can do whatever i want right so in this case inside of this function uh and actually no this isn't how i need it i need it to go like this sorry uh what we're going to do is, is we're going to say let <clears throat> system equals x86 oops x86 underscore 64 linux uh okay and then we're gonna say packages equals nix packages dot legacy packages dot and then we're gonna give it a variable of system right so let's talk about what i just did oh here let's also do this in there all right so let's talk about just what i've got just here right so i told you guys that when we first started this we needed to add our you know our very basic shell template which is right here right and then we evaluated it and made sure that it worked right um after that we need to add our first input which provides uh packages for our build right and so to do that we added the inputs package part right here right and so now what i can do is i'm going to close this out really quickly uh i'm going to cat dash p flake dot nix and then i'm going to paste this in now i'm not going to keep the outputs like that i'm just going to make i'm going to make it like this right nix packages but before i go any further let's let's do this let's do this let's just run this because i want to show you what happens when i just run this so i'm going to grab this code right i'm going to go back to my flake right <clears throat> right i'm going to go back to my flake and i'm going to delete everything else right so it's just this okay now i'm going to shift this back over here for a second and then i'm going to open up a new terminal and we're going to go back into the example folder right now here's the fun part all i've done besides just created our very simple boilerplate is added our inputs watch what happens when i do a nix flake show look at this do you see this look look at this do you see this download what is this downloading chat all we did was add in an input so what is this downloading what like chat what do you think this 29 meg like what was that what do you think that was chat next packages exactly that was us downloading the references for all of the current nix packages that exist in nix packages and if you look at the output you'll see warning created a lock file blah 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 well if we look at our directory oh there's a lock file now hey just like our poetry.lock file hey this whole lock file thing that bg talked about earlier is really kind of a completely uh you know it's kind of a completely repetitive thing let's take a look oh look at that it's got shaws in it oh that's right bg told us that nix packages will be downloaded and sha locked so whenever we go to install anything else it'll only download from that specific version of packages that are installed or at are available at that time in the repository oh, okay that makes sense let's do something else let's do nix flake metadata oh interesting look at this we now can see that the metadata of the resolved url of our flake is actually here so you remember how i told you that nix knows how to grab from paths it knows how to grab from github and other locations well what we're saying here is is that hey this particular flake exists in this path the locked url is right here with the particular last modified and sha what this means is that if i gave somebody this url it would lock and guarantee that it was at this uh last modified and uh using this sha um and then the path of the actual uh place in of its existence in the nix store um and then there you go here's our inputs right here nix os packages 
with the Shah. So this shows us already with just how adding just this, just, just adding input, we're already getting a lot of data and, and lock of, of, uh, you know, of what we need. Um, so the 29 megabytes is just a really big JSON file. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It literally is. Yeah. Um, or at least if I'm thinking about the right file, yeah, it's, it's just a massive JSON file that gets downloaded, parsed, um, and all of that. Uh, oh no, it's a copy of this. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So it is the whole, I didn't know if it was just the reference or if it was the whole repository. So it's the whole repository. It's okay. So it's the whole repository. Thank you, Grant. So I apologize. It's the whole repository. I wasn't too sure if it was just the, the JSON file or the, the whole repo itself, but yeah, it's the, it's the whole repository. Yeah. Which makes sense. It then is able to access it and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Exactly. A repo with 400k commits of Nix code. Yep. All right. So let's go back to our flake.nix, right? So we've got our inputs, right? And so then what we're going to do is, is uh, to confirm we set up our inputs properly. Uh, let's run, uh, let's run uh, Nix eval hello again, right? And we did that. And oh, man. Oh, okay, cool uh or nix flake show nix flake nix uh flake show i'm just gonna get rid of all these other paths because yeah there we go Um, user. I wonder if I could just do, yeah, I'll just do that. Uh, notice that a new flake.lock file is also created with, uh, contents of the Nix packages, uh, repository. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to flake.lock. Actually, here, we'll just do this flake.lock. And then we'll just copy and paste this. I know I don't have to, but I'm just doing it just so that you guys like get a visual reference of uh, boom. Cool. Okay. So now that we've got that in place, um, doesn't have the content of the next uh, it's the metadata needed to download the right content gotcha okay i mean it's like a lock it's a, basically it's like a lock file i mean it is it's a lock file <laughs> um it's doing what a lock file is supposed to do okay so let's go back to our flake.nix right now we know that our inputs are working and we know that we've essentially downloaded our packages right so at this point we at least have access to every repository or i'm sorry to every package available in the nix uh in the nix in the nix package manager right so if we need uh a specific package to install or something like that we should be able to do that pretty easily with you know with at least the packages that are already available to us so let's keep moving forward and let's keep writing what cran uh what cran implemented for us okay so let's go back here and he immediately jumps into outputs now as i said before we're going to set up the function um, and what it returns uh, for our output. So we're going to say let. Oops, come on now. Uh, system equals right x86 underscore 664 dash Linux, 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 Linux. There we go. Um, and then packages equals Nix packages, legacy packages. And then we're going to give it a value of system, right? Right. And I'm, I'm about to explain that uh, now. So before I go any further, I want to explain the next few lines of code and what they do. Now, before you'll notice that we had this, right? Where we had our parameters here, right? And then we had our returned expression, right? And essentially this returns... Um, a uh, attribute of hello equals chat so that when we evaluate hello, 
we get the value of chat. Now we don't want that, right? We don't want to, we don't need an output that just gives us a string. What we need is, is we need an output that gives us a package, right? Think about it like that. Like think about like types in JavaScript and types in other languages, right? Or not JavaScript and TypeScript and other languages. You have a specific type that you return. Right now, we're just kind of returning a, a string, right? We want to actually re return a package. We want to return a, a uh, technically what they're called is a derivation, der derivation, derivation. Um, and so we, we want to set that up. Now, there's some requirements we have for that. And if we go back to, uh, oh, did I just accidentally... Oh, I, I did actually, I did accidentally blow it out. But anyways, if we go uh, and, and implement what Cran has uh, done here, right? So what we're going to do is, is we're simply just going to get rid of the value inside. And then before it, we're going to set a, a let. This let is allowing us to define parameters or I'm sorry, define values that we can reuse in the scope of the uh, evaluated expression we're about to write. So for example x84 let me just write this really quickly x86 64 linux thank you um what this means is now we have system available to us that we can use in here so for example if i was like something equals system right now i have system available to me yeah it's basically a long way of setting set variables yeah it's but you're you, you the the thing that is important is that you're setting variables just for this right the let is attached oh here actually I, I messed this up a little bit my apologize my apologies what you really need is you need that there we go uh and what what it means is it's saying that any variables that we define with let will be available in this uh here yeah we do need in yeah we do need in sorry yeah we do need the in as well uh, and so we add that in there just to make sure that it's saying, hey, system is now available in uh, this return. Yeah, they're local to the end. Exactly. They're local to the end. Yeah. So we're going to say uh, we need another value, right? We need our packages, right? But we actually want our Nix packages. Remember, Nix packages is our input as well as where we're getting all of our packages, legacy packages. But in this case, we want to get it from the specific system. So you might ask yourself, okay, BG, what exactly are we doing here, right? Well, what we're doing here is, is we're saying we're declaring our system and then we're declaring the packages reference for that system up here in Nix packages. This just has every archetype, right? Like we have literally all of the packages. We have the packages for, for, uh, for arm. We have the packages for Intel. We have the packages for like, you know, all of that stuff. So what we need to do is, is we also need to, um, we also need to make sure that we tell it which system, right? Which system the packages are actually for. And in this case, we're saying, Hey, we're going to create a new value called packages and we're going to get the legacy packages, uh, for, uh, x86, 64 dash Linux. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and add that because I think that's a good, uh, point to, to add to the thing there. So we're going to say flake.nix. Um, and so let's just put, um, then we need to declare our out, uh, our, uh, our outputs, um, uh, local variables, um, for anything we may need. Right. And so, boom. Now we've got that and this should work, right? Like I'm pretty sure this is, a, is still a working. Uh, oh, that's because I didn't do that. So Nix flake show. Perfect. Okay. So it does work. I just don't have that output. Perfect. So that that's still working. Um, and we should be, we should be okay with that. Um, once we add, uh, then we need to declare our outputs, local variable or out local, uh, system and packages variables, uh, for anything we may need, uh, with relation to our application and, uh, platform dependencies. 
Um, cool. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sound good? Cool. All right, so let's move forward. So now that you guys have a bit of a better understanding on what exactly this is, right? Let's go ahead and keep moving forward with the code, right? Cran, I really appreciate you being chill, bud. Um, I hope you understand. I'm really trying to be an advocate here, but we got to go a little slow. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get there. All right. So let's get to the main meat of the rest of what Cran has presented to us. Um, and I'm going to break it down into three main parts or three main parts. All right. So I'm going to break it down into three main parts. We're going to break it down into packages. We're going to break it down into dev shells and we're going to break it down into apps. The first one we're going to work on and focus on is packages. Now, this is hands down probably one of the most important ones because this is where you're actually going to build your application, right? Up until now, you've really just seen a whole bunch of boilerplate code that we have created to get our flake in place. Again, we, you know, we, uh, if we go back to our document here, right? We've got our Python developer section where we, we, we've got Python installed, right? We created our file. We did the poetry stuff. We did all this, right? We did all this. We then, you know, introduced Nix by creating our flake and starting to create add inputs and all that stuff like we've got here, right? But we haven't actually talked about what is the actual thing that builds the Python package, right? Like there, we haven't talked at all about that, right? Well, this is literally where that comes into play. And this is where we tell Nix how it's going to build with poetry and give us our outputted result, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, quickly move this back over here just so that I have this. Um, and we're going to start by writing the packages part. Now, just like our outputs, right? Our, uh, our flake outputs are expecting specific attributes to be returned to them. And I want to be very clear on this, right? There is a DSL that this file has. It, it is expecting inputs. It is expecting outputs. And not only is it expecting inputs and outputs, but it's also expecting in those outputs to have a value called packages, right? Now, packages in this case is all of the packages that Nix is going to build. Now, there's three main things that Nix Flakes focus on building. They are packages, dev shells, and applications, right? Application, or I'm sorry, packages is the actual source code of your, pa of your, of your application, right? It's the, it's the thing that is built, that is reproduced, that is moved around, and all of that stuff, right? The dev shell is the thing that you actually work in. Right, that's the thing that Nix provides you a shell with that you can easily uh, have all of the environment, you know, binaries and everything you see, everything that you need inside of them, and that is readily available to you. And then the last one is apps, and apps is the actual thing that you can run with Nix. So if I wanted to do a Nix run, that is what declares when I run Nix run, uh, whatever it will know which one of those apps to run. Right. So again, this is for building, right? This is for development. And then this is for developer productivity of like being able to run the application, have different things like that available to you in the shell. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come back over here to our documentation and we're going to say, um, we will then need to add our first, uh, required parameter, right? For our output uh which is called uh packages uh with uh which is called packages that manages the actual uh build definition right of actual build definition of uh the uh Nix flake, right? And so I'm gonna go a little bit further than this and I'm actually gonna put the rest of it in. So we're gonna say, ooh, sounded naughty. So what I'm gonna say is, is um, system. And the reason why we say system here is, is because Nix allows us to build for all different archetypes, right? Again, we have x86-64 here. We could build for ARM, 
we could build for uh, whatever, you know, all the different types. So right now, what we're saying with these variables is we're saying, hey, whenever the system is declared, use that, right? So this could be, yeah, risk, risk v5, yeah. It could be risk v5, it could be whatever. This is a dynamic variable that um, Nix is going to replace for us uh, that, that we can use. Uh, now, right now, I think it's actually just going to be x86-64. But in the future, we can actually make it so that it's like a loop, and then this becomes much more dynamic. Right now, just to be clear, this flake, from my understanding at least, will only work with x86-64. Uh, but again, that's the only thing we're really worried about right now. Okay, so what we're saying is, is that we need a packages.systemdynamicvariable.default. What this means is, is that this is now the default package in the flake right that's what this means by system.default this means that this is now the default package in the flake so if i was to just do nix build i don't have to do any type of targeting it just knows okay well you set this as the default so let's go ahead and do that so there we go we go ahead and define our default and then we're going to say packages right why because we need to utilize a tool to build our package with right and where does that tool exist well it exists in our nix os packages repository what's cool about nix chat and this is what's what's i think one of the things you guys will immediately start going like oh i like this you can take packages from the nix repository and use them in your code so for example I want to build my package with something called poetry to Nix. You guys might have heard of it. Poetry to Nix. And the whole idea behind this is, is that this is a this is its own binary, its own you know project that can take a a poetry project and translate it into a Nix project. So I need that. And as a matter of fact, I need this make poetry application function. Again, what's dope about Nix is I can import this package like this. Packages dot poetry to Nix. And then I'm like, you know what? I need the function in that package. No worries. Dot make poetry application. So what is this doing, chat? This is using the power of Nix to allow me to lean on the package manager, right? To import an actual application and then use a function inside of that application. Now, if I wanted to, I could just do nix shell dash P um, poetry, right? Command poetry, right? And I, I get the command, right? Like I get the command here. But Nix also allows packages to have Nix definitions for them that can do things like define functions and other things like that. So not only can I install a package with the Nix package manager, but I can also use it in code. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, and so we're saying, okay, packages, poetry to Nix, make poetry application. And then we say project dir equals self. Okay. So let's 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 try um, uh, let's try doing a Nix uh, flake show again. All right. So what have we done? We added our default package, right? And then we say packages.poetry from Nix. Go out to our package manager, get the poetry from Nix package, and then run the make poetry application function with the parameters of project or self. All right. Yeah, I, yep, yep, yep. So there is one thing to note before I run this that I, is very important. Nix relies heavily, or at least Flakes do, on Git history. So if you don't have a Git history of these files, it will fail. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, if I was to do Nix show or Nix Flake show. Oh, whoops, hold on. you'll see that this works. I get a packages x86-64, default package, blah, blah. But if I do a Nix build, if 
this works and I'm going to be very confused. Yo, what's up, Doom? How's it going? Yeah, I don't know either. Oh, okay. It did work. <laughs> okay, never mind. So one thing to note really quickly about um, flakes uh, is that um, they normally depend... Oh, you know what, Cran? It's because I'm not in a repository right now. Okay, so let me rephrase this for the video. <laughs> so one thing to note about flakes is that they can rely on Git if you have a Git repository available. So right now, I don't have a Git repository available. So if I was to do, um, uh, you know, uh, Git status, right, you'll see I'm not in a Git repository. But if I do Git in it, and then I do show, look, how is that possible? It, my flake is here. Like, look, my flake is right here. And chat, you're going to run into this. You're going to find yourself in a scenario where you're in a Git repository and you haven't actually you haven't actually staged the file yet, um, but you are in a repo where it's going to say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no flake. There's no flake here. I don't know what you're talking about. The reason for that is, is because when you are in a Git branch, Nix respects your Git history. And so if you don't have a file in the stage tree like this, then it'll fail. But if you do this, then it'll work. So I want you guys to know that this is something you can run into, right? Uh, and we'll even put this in here. Um, bef uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put that in there in a second. But yeah, before you actually run any of these commands, you need to make sure that the files are staged uh, in the Git repository. Here, we'll, we'll, let's put this up here. Um, Nix project, uh, set up Python, set up Nix. Um, so here, let's do this. Let's say, uh, there's like a call out. Yeah, we'll say, um, uh, note, um, Nix respects git, uh, git history and will not identify a file until it's added to get um or here if you are using a git repository nix respects history and will not identify a file until it's added to git uh added to git yeah there we go thank you index uh git index thank you hello there Yo, what's up, Acorn? Thank you so much for the raid. What's up, Trash? Thank you for the 13 months, my dude. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Acorn, how is your stream? How are you? Hello, hello. Uh, welcome, everybody. By the way, I am, I'm, I know I just said that, but I am BG. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Alta 4 stream. Uh, I do a bunch of different stuff here. Uh, I primarily focus on DevOps uh, and, and a lot of uh, that kind of thing, mostly because it's my job. But I started out as a uh, front-end engineer. I then moved to a back-end engineer and then became a full-stack engineer and then moved into DevOps. I've been doing this for about 10 years, so if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. Uh, we also have a little blurb about ourselves right here. I have a co-host named Atota who also programs on the stream. He'll be he'll be making his debut very shortly, actually, for the programming. He, he also games, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions or anything like that, you are welcome to ask. Um, the, the, the TLDR on what I'm working on today, Chad, is, is I'm actually working on two things. I'm working on a new YouTube video, and I'm also working on a tutorial that we're going to be adding to our wiki. Uh, if you guys don't know about our wiki, uh, basically, uh, we have a really cool site, that. Uh, that we host, uh, for our community and all the stuff that we do in our uh, on our community is available to you in our wiki. So I'm going to be actually taking this article and posting it in DevOps and infrastructure um because this is related to that um and so you'll see like how to build a home lab this is one of the ones that we've got in here that i've been working on uh as well um and so i'm going to be putting in this document on basically uh how to nix a python project um and then on top of that i'm also going to be um building and making a youtube video not on this particularly but on content around this and stuff so we're working on that today if you guys don't know what nix is feel free to ask uh apparently i need to look at my dms hold on one second
Okay, I responded to you, Toda. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to let me know. Um, Angus, Dogus, hello, hello. Uh, stream went well. We were trying some TS challenges. Nice, nice. TS can be very challenging, so I hope the challenges were fun. What kind of challenges were you taking, if you don't mind me asking? Leaked everything. Nailed it. Yeah, totally. Um, just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're fine. He docks your ass big time. <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm excited for a Toto to start coding on stream because he's going to have to learn how to not dox himself and it's going to be really fun. <laughs> uh, Acorn, thank you so much for the raid, though. I'm glad to hear you stream it well. Again, let me know what kind of uh, TypeScript stuff you're doing. By the way, Trash, what's up, my dude? How are you doing, man? Thank you for the 13 months. You've been doing some TypeScript stuff lately, man. Hope Hopefully that's been going good, too. Um, Okay, cool. So let's let's get back into it. So like I said, guys, um, and, and again, just really, 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 really quickly for anyone just tuning in, uh, this is a diagram of essentially what we're building. Um, now, we've already done this part here. I'll, I'll go through it one more time because I think it's very, very easy for me to go through this very quickly, but I'm going to explain to you all of the parts of what we're doing, okay? So say you're a Python developer, right? This is where you normally start right here, this little guy right here, right? So you got Python, and then you use Python to execute your main.py, right? Boom, bam, boom, done. Well, then you say, all right, well, you know what? Python's great and all, but like, I need a way to manage my packages, right? I need to pip install stuff. I need to be able to know what versions of stuff I have installed. And Python really doesn't solve that for me. So how do I solve that problem? Well, we use something called Poetry. Poetry is a Python packaging and dependency, dependency management made easy. The TLDR on it is, is it like pip, it allows you to add packages, uh, manage those packages, as well as a bunch of other things that help with the developer experience. So if you've ever used dot, or if you've ever used uh, virtual M for required files or anything like that, all of that goes to the Dodo and you've got this new thing called uh, poetry. Right. And so that's the next layer that we have in our in our setup here. So if we get rid of all this, this is really what a Python developer's experience kind of looks like. We've got Python 3.1, which executes our main.py, but then we install poetry and we say poetry, hey, you know what, poetry, you take care of our package configuration. And on top of that, you also take care of our package sources, okay? So when I run Poetry, I want you to install those packages to some virtual M somewhere using Poetry, and then Poetry will also run Python to start, right? right like Poetry becomes kind of like our NPM or our cargo or whatever, right? And so we say, okay, cool, that's pretty nice. But, 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 it only works on my computer. Now I need to make it so I can reproduce it to other computers, I can deploy it to the cloud, I can do all of these other kinds of things, right? Now, you might go, oh, diggity dang, 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 BG. Well, what about Docker? Docker's pretty awesome. And it is. It is. Don't get me wrong. I love Docker. I use Docker all the time. Um, however, there is a cooler way of doing things uh, that we can do things without containers. Um, and it is called Nix. Now, in a Docker world, we have a Docker file. Right, you create a Docker file, you add some configuration to it, and then bam, bam, boom, you build your container, right? Well, in a Nix world, it's pretty much the same, but we're going to use a programming language called Nix to create a Nix file called a flake, which takes inputs and outputs to build what we need. Kind of similar to how a Docker file takes inputs of files and images and things like that to build. We have a very similar thing as well, right? And so that is the next layer in our stack. Now, what happens is Nix is three things. It's a language, it's a package manager, and it's also an operating system. These three things together make the Nix triangle or triumvirate essentially. Um, and we're going to lean on Nix to solve some of these problems. We're gonna lean on Nix as a package manager to build and install our dependencies for our applications. We're gonna lean on Nix to build and set up our dependencies for our dev shells, right? Yeah, the holy trinity. Uh, and then on top of it, we can lean on Nix for other things as well, like running our code and doing all these other things. The thing that's cool about Nix, or at least in this paradigm, is these little comments that I have here, 
right? If you look down here, the ecosystem that you're really dealing with is a developer ecosystem, right? This is all focused on what the developer uses and their tooling to create the code that they need to create. But up here, it's really focused on DevOps and infrastructure and more organizational things, right? The, the Nix Flake doesn't necessarily care about if you're writing in Python or if you're writing in Go. Like this can be Go, this can be Python, this lower part of the stack can be Go, it can be Python, it can become any of those things, right? But we use the same ways to build applications. We use the same ways to create dev shells and we use the same ways to do all of these other things that we do with just one thing. And again, if you were to replace this, this would be Docker in another world, right? Where you use a Docker file to use the Docker daemon to create applications, right? So again, it's similar in a lot of ways, but it's also very different. Now, again, I told you Nix is a package manager. It relies heavily on doing things like making sure that you have highly reproducible environments. And so in our scenario, what's going to happen is Nix is going to go out to poetry and it's going to reference that poetry.lock. And this is actually where we're caught up to exactly what we're doing right now, which is in our Nix file, which what you see right here, right? We have our inputs, which I told you. And again, if you want to catch up with the VOD, feel free to catch up with the VOD, right? And then we have our outputs, right? And then in our outputs, we have a couple of variables, the system that we're building on, right? And then the packages for that system, right? At this point, we can then declare our outputs parameters or our outputs attributes. Now, every output does have predefined values, just like a flake, right? So how a flake has inputs and outputs defined, right? Uh, an actual output itself has packages.system.default that you can populate and other things like that. So this isn't just writing a programming language, but it's actually using a program or writing with a programming language, but it's writing with a programming language to create a, a DSL or a configuration essentially. And so what we're saying is, hey, output, I have an output called packages.system.default, right? And so what this means is that I want to build a package on the system of my choice, x86-64, and it's going to be the default one. Now, here's where the poetry part comes into place, and this is where you guys just tuned in. With Docker, we build, you know, packages with things like, uh, you know, pip or Python or, or Go, you know, uh, uh, like all these kind of different, you know, we, we use compilers or transpilers, whatever. With Nix, you don't necessarily have to do that. With Nix, what you can do is, is you can rely on packages that have helper functions and things like that to build what you need. So what is actually happening here is, is I'm saying, hey, packages.system.default, I want you to return a whole build, right? Like this is the equivalent of a build that I'm returning right here. And this value, packages.system.default, will have this build or this what we call derivation um, of, the, uh, of the output. And so packages is referencing here packages, which is referencing Nix packages, which is our actual repository. So what we're saying is we're saying, hey, inputs from Nix packages should be from the latest unstable. It's going to be on x86-64. And then the actual specific set of packages we want to get is going to be from legacy packages for that given system. Then we say that four legacy packages in that given system, we want to use the poetry to Nix package to make a poetry application. This is where it all gets wired together, chat. And this is where we say, all right, I know that if I wanted to, I could come here and just be like Nix shell dash P um, poetry, right? And then do command poetry version, right? Something like that, maybe. Uh, and then you'll see like I get some type of output here. Maybe that's version. Yeah, there you go. So see, I, I can do that. But we're not just using poetry as a command line tool here. We're actually also using it as a library in our code, right? So we're saying, hey, the package poetry to Nix isn't, doesn't just come with a binary, but because we're in Nix world, it also comes with a Nix helper function that you can build other poetry applications with if you want to. And the project directory is going to equal to self or the current directory. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Nix flake show. 
And look at this. Now we have packages. Look at this. The output of x86-64 Linux and that default output is, look at that, our package Python 10 example Nix Python 0.1. Now you might ask yourself, what does all of this mean? Python.10 is the version, right? This is the name of our package and then this is the version of our package. So Nix is actually breaking all of this down based off of metadata and looking at it and then going, okay, cool. Well, on the x86-64 x86 platform, you wanna build the default package, which is our Python 3.10 example Nix package. Um, yo, right, Joy-Con, thank you for the 16 months, my dude. Thank you for the 16 months, appreciate you, brother. Um, and the continued copy and paste of what I'm working on. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So. We are actually at a point, chat, where we can build our application for the first time, all right? So what we're gonna do to build our application is we're just gonna save this. We're gonna save this right here, right? And we're gonna close it. Now I'm gonna do a cat-p flake nix because I'm gonna copy this over really quickly. I'm gonna fill out the document with this, right? So if we go back to our document, uh, we will then need to add our, which uh, manages the build definition for the nix flake. So now that we do that, right boom there's our our uh, our packages system default um at this at this point we are able to do our first nix build dash l rebuild uh to create a build for our application it does yeah no i was you know what's funny cran is is i was just gonna do a garbage collect <laughs> but that works uh yo glam thank you for the tier Woo, glam thank you for the tier one buddy right out of the right out of the pocket dude thank you thank you so much that was a uh, 4.99 you paid for fully and we thank you for it uh and again it's good to have you in the community man um teddy thank you for the raid my dude hello hello welcome everybody from teddy code's stream how are you teddy how's it going buddy i hope your stream was good uh, in the article, omit the L rebuild. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I see. Sure, good call. Uh, so let's do that. So we're gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna do Nix build dash L rebuild, right? But you only need to do Nix build. The only reason why I'm doing dash L rebuild is to actually show you what happens when we run it. Okay. So again, we added our packages definition, right? And then we're going to build it. So I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. Now we got a whole bunch of output and it's going to show us exactly what it's doing here. So let's, let's go through it super fast. So it says sourcing Python, remove test, sourcing Python, sourcing Python, sourcing pip, using bip, pip builds, using pip shell. So what you're going to notice is these are all phases, right? Nix provides a bunch of phases that it goes through as it builds different applications and things in its uh, in its build process. And so you're going to see it does things like source stuff, uh, uses different hooks. After it runs different hooks, it then triggers other hooks. And then look at this, executing pip build phase. Okay, cool. We create a wheel, right? And then we start processing our source. Look at this. Look, look created a wheel for example, Nix Python, right? Bam stored in directory bam right and then we start doing the pip install phase bam right got installed awesome and then we do a post install where we do uh i guess just like cleanup stuff and all of that other stuff and then we see executing python imports check phase okay so with that being said i should have something that now exists in my in my folder and i'm going to do this um, which is I should have a result. You see this chat? Now you might have asked yourself the question, that's great, BG, you built something, but what the f did you build and where the f is it? Well, what happens is when you build any anything that you use with Nix is added to the Nix store, right? And you'll see here that this has Nix store in front of it. This is the equivalent in some regards to how homebrew works where homebrew has like a folder where all of your installations go and then you just symlink to it, right? And that's exactly what's happening here. We're symlinking the result of the build to the Nix store output of that actual build. So what that means is, is that the data and everything exists in the store now as an actual immutable artifact 
and then we can run against it, right? And so what I'm going to do is ls dash l, I think, ls dash h, ls dash l. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to copy all of this, and then we're going to say um, nix build. Um, once this completes there should be a new result uh sim link uh sim link pointing to the build output in slash nix store right just like that and so we can just get rid of all of this because we don't really need all of this But does that make sense, guys, about the, the sim linking and stuff? Boom. Okay. Uh, so now that we've got the sim link, right? Now we should actually be able to run the result. So how do you do that is the question. Now, to be fair, I don't really exactly remember how to do it myself, but I know it's in the result folder. <laughs> uh, but there is a file. There it is. Bin. Start. Start wrapped. You see that? So what I should be able to do, chat, is just do dot result bin start. Hey! We did it! We did it! And that chat is a completely built uh, Nix package, right? So what has happened is that the Python project was built into the store location right here. And it was compiled, it, like it was completely processed like a normal application build. And if we look at this result, we have a bin, lib, and nix support folder. If we go into lib, we should see just like lib stuff related to the application itself, right? And if we go to bin, we see our actual binary that we are starting our application with, right? So what nix does is nix says, hey, I'm going to take your build and I'm going to wrap it with some Nix magic so that all you have to do to run your application is just do dot result bin and then the actual entry point. Remember chat, remember chat, chat, listen up. Remember, how did we get that start? Bam, right there. How did we get the start of the entry point for our Nix build? Right here. So again, this is what we mean when we say that Nix inherits the configuration from poetry. Poetry tells us what Love commands that. we've got and all of that stuff so that when Nix goes to build it, it knows how to make the actual command that we can use to start the build with. And again, that's why we get a sweet result build start because that is the command that we get. Show the hidden unwrapped thing. Uh, oh, sure. So you're talking about start wrapped? You're talking about this thing? Is this what you're talking about? So, uh, yeah, I don't know if this is actually wrapped, but um, the TLDR on what Cran is mentioning is Nix has multiple ways that it builds things. And again, I'm going to try and explain this the best I can because I still don't fully understand what wrapping means. Um, but the idea behind it is uh, you can have like a normal binary that you run and then you can have something that is wrapped in Nix. Uh, and the start wrapped essentially means that it's wrapped in Nix code and it's ran as like an executable. So for example, you'll see that in this scenario, start, it's just a shell script, right? Just a very simple shell script. Um, but then you'll see that we exec the start wrapped uh, Nix file and that's because we then go to a nix file is this nix or is this python no this is python yeah this is python a python file where it actually runs our code in a wrapped environment essentially um this is something that nix does uh where if you need like better support for what you're trying to do um you can kind of wrap it like this again i don't fully remember or know how exactly wrapping works all i know is is that um it essentially takes your build wraps it in a kind of like a Nix wrapper essentially, and then runs it that way versus just running like your actual outputted code essentially. Um, and so, yeah, so if we run it, 
right? If we do result, there we go. Hello there. We've got our output. So let's go ahead and add this. Do you have a doc uh, for getting uh, VMware? No, but I'm making I'm I'm actually making a YouTube video on it. So don't worry, it'll you'll you'll be having one soon. I would also say join the Discord if you ever have questions or anything like that. We've got tons of different places. Um, but yeah, it, it's something I will I will be getting out. Okay, um, to run, to run our build artifact, uh, use the following. And then finally, to run our artifact, use the following. Uh, if everything worked well, you should see the output from uh, start uh, return in the CLI. Uh, congrats, you just created your first Python project with Nix. There we go. So uh, there's a couple other things that I, I do want to go into really quickly. Uh, I do have to I do have to go through this really fast. So uh, let's try and go through it as quickly as we can. Um, there's one thing that we haven't gone into, and that is the uh, the dev shells, right? Um, so we created a flake, and then we want to uh, create uh, dev shells. Um, and we'll say after we create our flake, our our basic uh, flake. Uh, uh, whoops, uh, flake, geez, structure, uh, we want to include a basic, uh, a basic, uh, dev shell that we can enter anytime we want to develop. Uh, this should, this, uh, shell should have every dependency we need for, to, uh, to code. Right. And so what we're going to do uh, is we need to add a new. Um, what is it? Is it it's dev shells? Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah. Dev shells. Dev shells. Uh, definition like we did with our packages uh, uh, with our packages attribute. Uh, which in, uh, includes the configuration for our dev environment, right? And so now what we're going to do is, is we're going to, and I'm going to copy and paste this just to save myself some time, is we're going to create another attribute called dev shells, right? Now, if we look at the flake that we currently have, right, we'll see that we are building only a packages default. Right, that's it. We're just we're just building a package as default, so we don't really have any reproducible dev environment yet, and that's a big reason to using uh, Nix as well. Is is because you know it's it's a very very powerful thing that we can utilize. So I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste in what um what we have as our definition, and I'm gonna go for it through it really quickly. Now I've already kind of gone through the the DSL with packages, so some of this should makes sense right so again we created packages.system default well just like you can have packages with a specific system definition for it you can do the exact same thing with dev shells so you could say all right on x86 64 i want to have this dev shell with this dependencies on arm i want to have this dev shell with this dependency so forth and so on right so we're saying that the dev shell for this system is the default right this is the default for the x86 64 environment and we want to packages make shell no cc now the no cc part don't really worry about too much more so focus on the make shell part what is happening is just like the packages poetry to nix we also have a packages make shell remember i told you we can lean on nix's package manager to use other functions and things like that to build what we need 
So what we're doing is, is we're saying, hey, the dev shells.system default equals packages make shell. And in this, we're going to give this make shell function some parameters, right? Um, and so what we're going to say is, is we're going to create a shell hook. And this shell hook is a shell that command that are, sorry, this is a shell hook that uh, is a command that executes every time you enter the shell. So you can kind of think of this as almost like your MOTD, right? Your message of the day. So once you go into the shell, you should see a welcome to your Nix powered environment, right? And then we can even set environment variables if we need to in that shell. So we can be like, is Nix awesome equals yes. And now this is a environment variable that we have available, but we can even go one step further and we can add our own packages that we want in this shell that we need. Now, what you're going to notice is we're first evaluating the poetry to Nix make poetry env function, right? Remember, whenever you see something like this, where it has like brackets and then attributes inside of it, this is a this is a function that is uh, being evaluated. So this first line, we're actually making a poetry env. Uh, using the packages inside of it and the project or itself. And then we're also getting NeoFetch. And the point of ha having NeoFetch in here is to show you guys that you don't need uh, just project specific things, right? This is a non Python dependency. So for example, if I was like, oh, I need NeoVim, I could add NeoVim and then NeoVim would be in there as well. All right. So I'm going to save this really quickly. I'm going to close it out. And then uh, what's the command to, is it just Nix develop? Uh, is it just Nix develop Cran? I'm glad you're enjoying Python, by the way. But yes, okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, so let's create the explanation really quickly. Um, I gotta, I gotta do this really fast. So, okay. Um, the the above uh defines a dev shells dot system dot default uh for our given archetype and uh includes uh includes uh configurations for uh shell hook uh environment variables and any additional packages needed right um, to start your new development environment simply run nix develop right so now that we've got that we do nix develop And look, look, it's doing the exact same thing as the build. There we go. Welcome to your Nix Power Development Environment. Bim, bam, boom. And here we go, chat. If I do NeoFetch, I have NeoFetch. Again, if I open up a brand new shell and I do NeoFetch, I do not have NeoFetch here. Look at this. Very clear. I do not have NeoFetch. But because I'm in my dev shell, right, that was built for me, I now have NeoFetch. And again, I can just leave it. Next develop, bam, right back in it. Uh, your new shell. There we go. Uh, yeah, let's check if the NVAR is there. Echo, uh, Nix is awesome. Or no, is Nix awesome, right? is nick's awesome yes hey there we go we'll we'll get all of it we'll get we'll get all of it there you go and there you go chat that now gives us not only our flake but also our dev shell as well now i'm going to go over one other thing super super fast and that's the app system default 
right up until this point the only way we've been able to run our application is by doing a uh nix build right and then doing a uh dot result right bin start right this is this is the only way right now we're really able to to run our application well nix provides us with one more thing to make it so that that is possible and uh that's going to be the apps section Right. So in the packages section, we define what we want to build. And in the dev shell section, we would define what kind of shells that we want. Well, in the app section, it will actually make it so that we can run the given uh, application that we need um, directly without having to like build it per se. Right. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to go here and we're going to simply copy and paste this definition of apps system default now you'll notice the pattern is very similar right app system default type program all that stuff now i'm just going to do this i know cran you did this differently i'm just going to do this for the sake of our viewers right um okay like that there we go and let's take a look at it so just like with dev shells we're back to that hole we need to do it for a specific archetype right dot default and then look apps dot system default program self dot packages system default build bin yams now this is actually for us going to be bin start so we're going to change that to start and then we're going to say type application so what this means chat is is once i add this right i don't need to do nix build anymore right nix build but what i can actually do is nix run and now my entry point is integrated into nix to where i can run that directly as well and chat you are now officially covered on your very first flake file congratulations give yourself a round of applause you guys did great i'm super proud of you seriously i appreciate you holding up hanging out going through all of this you now officially Hello have there. learned how to set up your very first nix shell or i'm sorry nix environment and all of that good stuff um i hope you enjoyed it i hope you did um big shout out to cran seriously massive shout out to cran uh he's been a super super help and proponent in helping grow our nix community uh let me read what yeah let me read what cran said in the discord and I got to read this really quickly because I got to get going. Uh, this will give you a Nix shell. The correct term is dev shell that you can enter by using Nix develop. The shell will include Python and all the needed dependencies to build the package. I've also added a non-Python related package to the shell in case, in this case, NeoFetch. It will also give you a package output called default that you can build with Nix build L. Omit the L flag if you don't want to see the build logs. Also added an output app that executes the program Nix run, which is what I just showed you. So I basically just showed you everything that he kind of sums up here perfectly uh the reason we don't have to specify the exact output to the run build enter shell is because since we don't have an output called d or since we have an output called default nix defaults to running that builder just like we said right that default knows and says okay it's for this environment bam bam boom more specific poetry to nix functions and api listened here go ahead and check that out join the discord if you want to see all of this stuff um and then if you just care about building a binary script, then you can swap make poetry application for make scripts package, right? Because it focuses on a different type of build. You can override settings in the flake via poetry Nix overrides functionality. But for the most part, you should just use the Pi project Toml. The whole point of using poetry to Nix is that you can at least touch or you can touch at least or as least possible Nix and have it all dynamically generated from the Pi project uh, Toml file, which totally makes sense, right? Remember, lock your project's dependencies with poetry lock yes make sure to use your lock files and if you want to build the project for systems other than x86 let me know and i will modify the yes that's one thing to note this only works on x86 64 uh on x86 64 um uh, uh arcs but yes we can make it so it works for others in the discord we have a channel called nix it's right here right here nix channel you just scroll down a little bit it's under the in real life stuff yep feel free to join in be a part of the uh be a part of the conversation let me do one other thing uh one other th uh so uh congratulations you created your first uh nix flake for python okay and then we're gonna do one last thing before i go which is uh one two three uh create 
apps. Um, up until now, the only way we could run our built application was by uh, building first with Nix build, then uh, referencing the output path results bin start. Um, we can simplify this by adding a apps uh, apps attribute to our output like uh, packages and dev shells. All right, so we're gonna say that we can simplify this by adding a apps attribute uh, with our uh, configuration. Okay, and then we're gonna say da da da. I'm gonna do this. Cat, and here we go. Okay, cool. All right, chat. There it is. I think this is entirely a ready article for you guys. And guess what? I'm going to post it right now because I got to get going. Um, and so we're going to say how to da, 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 how to nix a Python project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would love that, actually. Yeah. All right, so we're going to copy all this. Nixify? Yeah? Is that what we should call it? Nixify? All right, chat. Problem. We have no way to create a Python from scratch. Set up. Okay, cool. Do, do. I had a lot of fun doing this today, chat. This was, this was super fun. And now I know how to do this. You guys know how to do it as well. Um, yo, what's up, Disc 105? Let me just make sure I've got this. Copy. Let me make sure I've got this as well. Okay. All right, chat. It's all yours. If there's anything in here that you, uh, here, I'll also, I'll also put this. It. Um, if you see any issues, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll put this later, but yeah. All right, chat, here we go. I'm going to post this for you. Instead of getting the normal VOD stuff that you get, you're getting a whole sweet freaking tutorial. Give it a second. I don't know why it's like taking a second there. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. All right, chat. It's all yours. You are welcome to embark. Use my knowledge. Go further. Go make great things. Again, feel free to join our Discord as well. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I got to get going. I got to go to a meeting. Um, I'm like seven minutes late technically. So, oh, well, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and head off to this meeting guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. The massive amount of support. We had like 32 gifted subs in the first like 20 minutes of the stream. Uh, I had no structure whatsoever with regards to today's stream either. I just kind of winged it. And to be fair, I think we got something really, really cool out of it. So uh, enjoy again, enjoy the, 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 how to Nixify a Python project. Uh, be sure to, to check it out. 
Um, be sure to also join our Discord. If you ever have questions, anything like that, be a part of our Discord. We have a great community that's growing in the Knicks world. I want to keep growing that community. I want to keep trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, be more of an advocate for it. I, I really do like Knicks a lot. So, you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a process, but we'll we'll get there together. Um, again, be sure to join the Discord. We also have our YouTube. We have uh, two YouTube channels. Our first YouTube channel is our main YouTube channel. That's where all of the cool new stuff that you guys are super excited about that I'm, I've am i been working fervorously on uh, will be as well as our Alta 4 archives. So if you ever miss a VOD or anything like that, you can always check the archives. Always be sure to check out the Twitch stream section as well. Uh, I'm not going to post it right now, but I will post it later with regards to all of our VODs. So if you ever miss any other stream as well, you can always go back to this uh, and get a little bit of a breakdown of what it was as well as the video for it. So be sure to check out the wiki. Um, and again, we also have social media too. Follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, but again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Again, all the, the subbies, the resubs, the follows, uh, the friendships, like you guys are amazing. Um, I hope, again, I really, really hope that today um, at least made you feel a little bit more confident about Nyx and what it is um, and, and you know, some cool stuff you could do with it. All right, let's go find somebody to raid. Let's go find somebody to raid really quickly because I got to go. I got to roll. Um... Um, is there anybody recently that I have not raided that we have raided that we can raid? Let's see here. Um, is anybody doing game dev by any chance? <laughs> I mean, not game dev, uh, DevOps. We need more DevOps people, chat. <laughs> we do. Let's um, go raid Griffin. It's been a while since we've raided Griffin anyways. Um, and to be fair, I really can't spend too much time looking. So let's go raid Griffin. If you guys don't know Sam Griffin, he's a wonderful, wonderful soul. One of our close friends on the platform. We've known him for quite some time. Let's go say hi to Griffin. Um, it was fun. Uh, now keep infecting your, yeah, I will. All right, let's go raid Griffin guys. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. Go say hi to him. Uh, I will be back Friday. I will be back Friday. So I hope to see you guys Friday. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of stuff coming. I know I keep talking about it and I know you guys have been super patient. Today was only a taste of the sweetness coming your way in the future chat. So get hyped, all right? Get hyped! All right, love you guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Enjoy Chris's stream. Bye.